Hello, hello, are we live? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the 76th, 76th episode of Debate Direct. Um, you know, this was gonna be episode 75, but then the max mode list happened, and I thought, hey, let's do that. Um, and I've had a lot of ideas for Minecraft specific tier lists and the like lately. Um, there's these charity shout out QOTD, by the way. Uh, I'm just gonna pause this. Um, you know, I've had a lot of different ideas for Debate Directs. I had this really cool one for doing, like, uh, who can conceive the best Minecraft update, but. That requires a lot more time and planning, and I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, this is the busiest month of the year for me. This is by far the busiest month of the year for me. I have so much going on, both in and out of Mr. Matt and the Hydration Nation and all that. Um, like, I didn't do any stream yesterday. I don't know if anyone noticed. I've been doing- I only did one Minecraft stream out of the last, like, five Saturdays, but it seems like no one really cares as much. It's- Honestly, kind of sad that the most, you know, played game of all time, one of the pillars of the channel, you know, I, I barely play it for like a month and like no one really bats an eye. But if I go one week without doing a FNAF stream, everybody's flipping their shit. And uh, I just think that's, I don't know, that's interesting. I guess at the end of the day, you know, FNAF is something that I've grown up on and been defined by, but Minecraft was here a long time before I was and, you know, it'll be here long after. Um, you know, uh, Minecraft is, is less personal, less like, you know, indie. I, I only ever played the AAA version of Minecraft. I never played indie Minecraft. By the time I started playing, it just been bought out by Microsoft. So I guess there's that. It's, you know, not really a me thing. You know, Minecraft is, is so vast and universal and there's so many different iterations of it that maybe it's just not, you know, <sighs> as specific. Anyways, so that's not what we're talking about today, though. This episode of Debate Direct, we're going to be doing some tier lists about Baldi's Basics. The many different versions of Baldi's Basics contain a colourful cast of characters and a vast variety of items. So today, I'm here to rank all of them and talk all things Baldi's Basics and more. Now, there's only three decent Baldi's Basics tier lists that I could find on Tier Maker. They are all linked in the description if you'd like to share your own. Maybe you could do hashtag Baldi's Basics. Basics or hashtag, hashtag Baldi tier list or something um, in the Hydration Nation because I will be sharing my own and so will my collaborator. Hello. 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 Bro, you you good? Am I good? Am I what's up? What's happening? Are you vibing? Uh, you're live. I um I know we didn't do the usual mute and introduce, but uh you know everyone knows who you are, guys. The one person joining me for this discussion today is uh, my homie, my uh, my hombre, my rock, uh, <laughs> Ethan. Uh, how you doing, man? How you doing? I am doing. I am doing. I just I just woke up from a, a little nap. <laughs> Holy shit! I was gonna say you didn't sleep until 4 p.m. I mean, I've done that, but man, I have to be having a really rough day for that to happen. Whoa. Nah, it's just a nap. Yeah, um, welcome. Uh, guys, if you don't know who True Player is, what are you doing? Just go subscribe. He's already, he's tagged in the description. If you don't I know made, who this guy I made, is, I don't know what to tell you. I play FNAF and I made edits of some FNAF trailers. Mmm, they're honestly so convincing, I could not distinguish them from the originals. I'm more interested in Giga Chat Adventures right now, though. I just want to, um, get the audio balance correct as well, guys. Can you hear, uh... Can you hear Ethan over this? Am I... Am I audible to you all? Can you hear my... Sexy voice? I think this is a bit loud. If I do this... Oh man, that's still kind of loud. What I'm gonna do is actually open the background music I normally use for, um, you know... Um, debate directs, although obviously we had the intro music there, I thought we'd be cool to put in a little touch of Baldi's soundtrack and, you know... You've got your, um, you know, you've got your video on there. All right. I just, I hope the audio balance is okay, because I'm wearing new headphones, guys. These headphones, they just came in the post, like, yesterday. Um, I think that's a bit quiet. Uh, the, like, these are new headphones. They just came in, 
and for some reason, and I've had this tech issue with loads of Bluetooth devices, and I don't know how, but I, I think it will be fixed. I just, I don't know how exactly it works or what happens. Whenever OBS is open, they mute. Even though everything is saying they're working the systems, the audio stops physically coming out of the headphones whenever OBS is open. I don't know why. So I've put in the auxiliary lead, which is actually from another pair of headphones. These were the cheapest one I could find, so nothing came with them. And everything's really quiet for me. It's not as bad as the Bluetooth headphones. But, um, I hope the audio is, is good, so please tell me if there's any issues, if any, anything's too loud or too quiet. Let me just catch up with chat before we continue, because I haven't said hi. Duncan, Livy, welcome. Um, <clears throat> um, sounds like General Group is coughing, yeah. And Jared VR, welcome. Nice to see some people here, because I tell you guys what, Baldi's Basics, kind of underrated. Kind of, I think it's getting there. I think it's, it's, it's growing in popularity. I just hope when Plus releases... Um, it gets a lot more mainstream coverage because this game, you know, deserves a lot more and um, Exactly exactly guys. I agree with what you're saying in chat. Um Is there is that everything I've to oh also um, I shaved so I was Going to visit some relatives yesterday, but then I wasn't because time ran away and I had to change priorities but I needed to shave and I was in a bit of a hurry so, uh, I have this now. This is new. I always thought goatees look pretty ugly, but my dad says I can pull it off, so I guess this is just how it is now. New facial hair unlocked. New cosmetic, guys. Character cu customization. You can now play as Luigi. You can now play as goatee, Mr. Matt. I mean, look at this. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this is pretty mid. Um, anyway, yeah. Are we all good? Are we ready to go? I think, I think we are. I'm ready. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna check the audio myself, but I think it's good. Let me just check this, guys. On so if I just mute you, and if I mute you, sorry. <laughs> Self, but I think it's good. Guys, uh, this is good. all good. We ready to go? I think I think we are. I'm ready. Alright. Uh, um, he's uh for um. Continue because I haven't said hi, Duncan. I could find working this, and I don't know. Just keg, you've got your. Do you hear the background music I normally use? Alright, we're good. Had to be sure. Alright, let's do this. So, All right. um, we are here to do some Baldi's Basics tier lists. You know, guys, I I've kind of run into a little issue. I used to, like, ping a lot of people and make public posts inviting people to collaborate. And obviously that doesn't work because you can't just have anyone on for a collaboration. But also... Like, I don't know if I should be pinging individuals or something, because I don't know who is really into, like, Baldies, and who would want to join me in voice chat for Baldies. And Ethan ended up being the only person here. I know Windbug is big on Baldies, but they, like, they never really voice chat. So, I'm just saying, if you guys ever want to join a collaboration like this, some collaborations are pretty much open to whoever, as long as you can meet a few basic requirements. Uh, and if you're not in the Discord already, links in the description on the banner, you can join, there's a whole process. There's a channel called Ask Matt, if you're confused, go there, but you have an FAQs. There's a lot of stuff. Um... Nephrite's in chat, and they said inst they instantly said put beans in Nephrite, F2. Nephrite, welcome. Guys, if you don't know who Nephrite is, they're basically someone, uh, from Ethan's community. Uh, true. Actually, you know what? We should, um, advertise your Discord server. This thing is popping off. <laughs> this is like, uh, you know, guys. If you don't know True Player, do you want to explain? How about you explain? Uh, well, this is, this is the third attempt at creating a Discord server. Uh, I hope this one actually goes well, and it seems to be going well better than the past two, anyway. Limited. This actually been really active. I've got quite a few people in here. Yeah, um... I'm gonna put a little advert in the description, guys. True Player has a brand new Discord server. It's only been going for a few weeks and it's already popping off. We have a lovely community there. Uh, it's a great place to go for all things True Player. You should absolutely go check it out. Um, I would highly recommend it, personally. Tell me if the link in the description doesn't work. Should be good. Um, but yeah, I'm, as you can see, I'm actually a moderator on there as well. So is Ambience. You know, you can meet all kinds of great people there, including Nephrite. Um, anyway. Yeah, sorry, I keep stalling because I'm used to having more to say, but I think we should just get on with the lists. So, Baldi's Basics, guys. Today we're going to be ranking items, characters, but also, first of all, playable builds. I just want to look at all the versions of Baldi's Basics 
and just kind of kind of rank them. Um, it might not be comprehensive, but we can like you know catch it up if it doesn't include like the new one. Um, I quite know. a few. Yeah. Do just partially. I've oh. definitely played version one point three, the last version of version one point two, the first demo mm. of Hill Trip, and version one point four. All right. Uh, just to be fair, guys, um, I know a lot of people make these tier lists and they hate being negative because they're too afraid to be critical of things they love. But me, um, I will go all out. So I'm going to create categories for E and F. So we've got S, A, B, C, D, E, F. I think that's pretty wide. I don't think we're going to use all of those. But basically, you know, C is like, okay, you know, E is bad, A is good, you know. Um, I just want to catch up with chat one more time because... Livy just said, do just partially quit Movember. Guys, I completely forgot, but does this count as, like, Movember? Because I, if I just shave this and I've got the mustache, haven't I? That would be even worse. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but I did actually make a community post recently challenging you guys to get me to 1.1 thousand subscribers. Um, and I will, I will shave to have an ugly mustache for Movember. Where is it? Here. Yeah, if you can collectively get this channel to 1.1k subscribers, I'm gonna post this again, I think. I think people need to hear this again. The channel is not growing. We've stagnated, but now, oh, well, it is what it is. Um, mm. Uh, Contentino has a few subscribers, so I think that should count to, uh, hmm. towards this challenge. Ooh, we could do that. We could do that. But it's about the effort. It's about the struggle. There's no struggle when one big old FNAF video is popping off on the algorithm. Because once it's started, it don't stop. We saw this with Deceptive Cock. We're seeing it again with Where Was the Mangle, you know? Oh. Yeah, it's, you know, that's out of my hands. But, uh, well, hey, the, I hit it. <laughs> at least the, uh, the, the Where Was the Mangle, whatever the Mangle video was, actually that has some effort put into it. True, true. That was a very high effort video. That was the best edited video on continuity area yet. It is yet to be topped. The top video that will top it is currently in production. But um, DDLC is the least viewed thing on my channel, so I don't know if anyone's actually going to watch that. <laughs> Anything that's, that's not FNAF will instantly be left viewed. Mm. Yeah. That's just a sad reality. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Let's do this, though. So, Baldi's right. Basics. Um, we've got, they're in a bit of an odd order here, so I'm going to try and go in chronological order here. I want to begin with the original, Baldi's Basics Classic, also known as Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning. No one calls it that anymore, but that is, to this day, the full title of the game is actually Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning. I think that was dropped after the original, but that is the title. So, the original Baldi's Basics, where does it go? What do we think? I'm just putting uh, in C as a provisional, guys. I'm going to change it. All these versions, like, like, like different versions, like, not different versions of the same game but like different like games like cat field trip class remastered uh classic all that mm. right okay um so i'm going to assume that this is based off the latest version of classic which is 1.4.1 .1. um yeah so i would just assume the newest version of each one because obviously within each, uh, let's call them editions, let's go to the Minecraft route. These are all different editions yeah. of Baldi's Basics. Within these yeah. editions, there are obviously different versions. Baldi's Basics, the original, changed significantly between version 1.3, 1.4. But let's assume this is the final one, you know, you've got first prize has been added. And, you know, you've got the secret ending and all that. It's all there. All the content is there. Alright, so... Oh, is Platy live? That's cool. Hello, DJ. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, he hasn't missed anything. You've come just in time. All right, guys, now is the perfect time to be hopping on. Ethan, let's start. Well, where do you think Classic deserves to go? Uh, either a B or an A. I'm leaning more towards an A because mm. it's the original, the original Baldi's Basics. Yeah. And it's one I'm the most familiar with. Like, I, I pretty much know the ins and outs of this game, and I had recently true. created a strategy that... Um, should get you the win. You've got nice. your own strat. This man's got the strat. You love to see it. Yeah, if we actually got a true player's channel, guys, he does have a Baldi's Basics playlist. It's one of the very few games he has actually done videos on other than FNAF and Geometry Dash. Um, I haven't played on very long. I'm trying to get the secret ending, but it's very hard to do. Isn't it on mobile because you don't have a PC, like your own PC? or I've, I've, I've played the PC version in the past back in 2019. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, it's, you know, basically, guys, it's it, it's only the original, but it's it's very cool. Um, there's some cool Easter egg videos um, there. I did my birthday bash and some Baldi's mods. Mm. Yeah, man, I've forgotten so, some of these mods. I hope Plus gets some good mods after it releases, or maybe even Classic Remastered, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so you think A? Yeah. Um, what do I like about the game? Well, it introduced us to the world of Baldi, you know, all the characters, principle mm -hmm. of the things, uh, playtime, uh, God of Sweep, uh, the sub puppet, what's his name, Arts and Crafters. Yes, um, uh, you remember all the character names, respect. You'll have to see what, it. What other characters are there? Uh, so the, the original, I'm fact, yeah, I think you've got this. Name all of the yeah. original characters in Classic. Just start over. All okay. the ones in Classic, go. Okay, Baldi, Principle of the Thing, Playtime, Gotta Sweep, Arts and Crafter, It's a Bully. Uh, is that everyone? You're missing uh, one. Uh, I, I wasn't Technically, yeah, I know, two, I, I guess. I know First Prize, because... First, first Prize, I'm... yes. That's all of the ones you run into in the main game, I believe. Yeah, um... I don't know if this counts, but file name two. Oh yeah, the uh, the character the who is ending. now known I, as Null in Classic Remastered. So I, I guess I guess if we're going there, that we can include zero surprise. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's like the unused sprites and stuff as well. Some people count those. Yeah. Anyway. Oh yeah, the, uh, the, the 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 giant face that you um, mm. can see. I always imagine that's what the player character looks kind of like, but it's too similar I, I, to It's a Bully, so... Yeah, I thought it was just an undistorted It's a Bully face. Mm. Yeah. So, if if you're done, I'm going to do my analysis now. A for analysis. One thing, I will say, one thing I will say about this compared to... Uh, one thing about Classic compared to the other games is it, it has this creep factor that I don't think the other games uh, manage to hold, because... It's in the style of those 90s, you know, edutainment games, and it has a very similar look and feel to, like, those 90s Nintendo 64 games, you know, yeah. where you have those 2D sprites that wrap around you that make it look 3D. Well, and all the new versions that, still have that. That hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah but something about the um, the classic version just sticks out. I, I don't know what it is. I think I know I'm what not... it is. I think I know what it might be. And, and something about that style of games from the 90s on the N64, those really creeped me out for some reason. I don't know why. I'm going to make a... a, a I'm going to presume all over you, okay? I'm going to do a mark. I'm going to presume all over you. Sound design, animation. The original version of Baldi's has by far the least polish of all the games. You don't have the Baldicators, you don't have all of these strong, warm, familiar sounds, you know, from the characters. As well as everything being alien and new at the time, there's this emptiness. And it's the same thing that's kind of present in, you know, um, the, the Source Engine and even SCP Secret Laboratory um, as one. You know, there's a video I saw recently that was arguing why that game has a similar creep factor to, like, Gmod and Half-Life with its environments, which is a whole other thing. But basically, yeah, it's got this emptiness because there's a lack of polish and detail with things like animations and sound effects. And there's no ambience. There are times when you're playing when it is completely silent other than Baldi's ruler, unless you're really far away from him. And I think that, as well as, again, the alien nature, the lack of information, you know, the le we've, we saw less of Baldi at the time, we knew less about him and his personality, that added to the creep factor. So in that way, this is the scariest Baldi game, and the newer ones are actually less scary, because there's been more put into them, and that's just fairly unknown. But, yeah. I, yeah, and I think, I think the lack of you know, polish and features in the classic version. I think that was the mm. intent, because this was originally just a game jam game. Well, that's correct. Make, make so, I'm going to do my analysis now. The meta game jam of 2017, February, uh, something, it was 10th or something? No, that's Bendy, what am I thinking? This game released like, no, it was 2018, wasn't it? This game yeah. released like a exa almost exactly a year after Bendy Lee Machine's first alpha. How crazy is that? Look it up. What's the anniversary of Baldi's Basics? Um, uh, but yeah, Mark. Uh, well, March? I don't know. The I don't know the anniversary of the release, but I know the anniversary of the uh, the date of development starting, which was March seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. Oh, was it a bit later? It was February. Whatever. Um, basically, 
the original Baldies uh, was made in two weeks for a meta game jam, and it came second. But I have no idea what came first or what the overall game jam was because this thing blew up and uh, that context kind of became irrelevant. Uh, this idea was just one of those indie games of like what I call the FNAF era that just kind of stuck with people and that's why we're all still here all these years later now. It's just an excellent indie horror game that takes a specific style, a very, very distinct style niche uh, and parodies it and kind of twists it in a, a really well-designed way. Bendy was famous for the same thing, FNAF was famous for the same thing, Doki Doki Literature Club, you know, got popular for the same reason, but they were all did different things, you know, FNAF was 80s animatronics, you know, Bendy was, you know, 30s, 40s, yeah, you know, old-style cartoons, DDLC was a, a parody of, you know, anime, dating sim, visual novels, and this is obviously 90s edutainment. The original Bolly's Basics classic is like, it, it, it's, it's awesome. I think it's an easy A tier because obviously it's the introduction and everything, the character designs are spot on, and thankfully they have not been changed. Uh, it's one of the highlights of the game, I think. As well as obviously the gameplay, it's like Slender the Eight Pages mixed with maths. They made a math, well, maybe the maths part is fun, but they made, you know, they put maths, you know, and, and Slender Man together. Um, and you've got your, you know, um, you know, the, the variety of the items and stuff. It's a fun game. It's replayable as well with, like, the secret ending and stuff. Content-wising, it's great. There's one serious issue, which I think brings this down to A and possibly even B for me, and that is game balancing. This was made in two weeks as, like, a game jam thing. It was never intended really to be a full game. And even with all of the updates going up to 1.4, adding first prize and the like, the game still suffers from, like, really significant RNG and, like, imbalancing issues, all of which have been fixed since in Plus. Um, but, you know, Baldi's pre-Plus, Baldi's basically was, like, kind of horrendously imbalanced, especially when trying to go for the secret ending and get all the notebooks. You had to get quite a bit lucky, and even now, I would say there are still unwinnable situations, but um, it's nowhere near as bad yeah, as it was with uh, the older versions. We'll nowadays, song came on. Uh, nowadays, classic is it's mostly all right. There are still a few unwinnable situations, but like mm. one point three used to be way worse because you know how yeah. I don't know if you know how Bobby's um, aggravation works. Yeah. Um, do you want to? You explain this. You explain this. Basically, Baldi's Baldi gets faster for every a wrong answer you get. But if you, it, um, um, so there's two separate answers. There are, you know, answerable questions and the impossible question. For an impossible question, which you can only get it wrong, Baldi speeds up, but he permanently speeds up after that. Um, if you get a question wrong, you could have gone right. That adds to a temporary anger uh, uh, meter, which. Um, Baldi does speed up, but over time he'll slow down, mm. and that's what makes the secret ending possible. Yeah. Now, before version 1.3, which added, you know, the secret ending, first prize, you know, WD-40, all that. Oh, um, yeah, WD wasn't in the original. Yeah. Before version 1.3, that this temporary anger meter didn't exist, so if you got a, uh, a possible question wrong, <laughs> then Baldi would become permanently mad, and... Once in before version 1.3, once you had all seven notebooks, Baldi was actually way faster. Basically, um, this guy's yeah, this is basically yeah. what he looked like. Like, it's not even a joke, it was insane. Yeah, and uh, every you had to play perfectly. If you got an inc if you got an answerable question wrong, then Baldi would come so fast up to a point that it was literally impossible to you know escape him, even with like all the beast sodas and um dusty bars and such yeah um again i love Baldi's basics i think it's always been like a pretty legendary game but the original was seriously imbalanced especially before 1.3 and 4 those those updates really improved it i think i think if it was split further i put 1.3 and 4 in a and the other ones before in b just because of balancing issues but yeah yeah um we can't we can't really to miss man for that because again it's not it wasn't meant to be a full game exactly it was only after this had happened only after 1.1 1 .1 or whatever it was released that you know Micah McGonagall Miss Man 12 who now goes by basically games was like oh this is popular let's it was do stuff let's make it bigger and then they did you know the Kickstarter and all that kind of thing for the full game which became plus yeah it was in it was in May 2018 during version 1.2 but I believe that, um, that was when it got and then 
the update came around after everyone had played it, uh, thought, you know, it was kind of hard to beat, so that's when he kind of made it easier. Dude, we've been talking about this one version for like 15 minutes. I, I thought this stream would be like, you know, lacking time and it'd be too short. I'm not worried anymore, but we should probably oh, keep it moving. It's just that good. We don't worry, we won't spend this long on every single one of them, but we're talking about the original here, so we do want to spend a bit of time on it. But yeah, like, I think I've said everything I want to about it, so I'm going to catch up with chat, I'm going to keep moving. I just want to say, yeah, I am aware, you know, originally other subjects were going to be added, but because it wasn't time, it ended up just being math, which is probably for the best, because it made the game more consistent and um, easy to play. There was actually, in one of the classrooms, there was one on the, one of the whiteboards that says, mm. ran out of time to add more subjects, but yeah. in one of the updates, change to sorry was too lazy to add to more subjects well yeah reasons change you know he had time and then he uh, became lazy i guess that's what he says you know in, in uh, after the yeah. time because 1.3 and 4 that you know those updates took weeks he actually took time on those um i just want to say yeah i imagine geography and history could have been done as like multiple choice questions spelling could have been an easy one where you have to like type the correct spelling um, but yeah, I don't know what other subjects would have really worked, to be honest. I'm kind of happy that we just got maths thing. It fits the game. I think in the code, um, I used just some cheat, like, cheat engines to, like, you know, mess around with the character AI and such. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a, played with a mod yeah. back in the day where you could, like, change the number of characters, their speed and everything was great. Yeah. The and, original. Um, the, uh, the, uh, notebooks actually have internal names, um, and the names are, like, different subjects. Um, really? There was English geography there was history oh yeah and each color was like a specific one but then yeah yeah that, i remember there was a, a phase with the demos for plus where all the notebooks were green and it was like that whole game mechanic was being changed because we moved away from the you can think pads to the math machines which i think was again great one <laughs> a great choice and yeah demo <laughs> nephrite's got a point but it's not as unfair we'll talk about that soon because demo style and plus yep. ooh. Imagine there was a chemistry subject and you had to cook a methamphetamine with the help of Walter White. Jesse, we need to cook! Answer correctly, and... You'll get some methamphetamine. <laughs> you can get high, you junky piece of shit! Ha ha! Man. There's so many good memes there. Anyway, we gotta keep things moving, guys, so we're gonna move on. That's Baldi's classic, A tier. Almost perfect, but, you know, again, fundamentally flawed gameplay-wise. And again, it doesn't really have a story or lore, and I don't want to judge it by the metrics. I think it functions best without. You can kind of just look at how well the characters are designed and the kind of, you know, iconography of the game. Obviously, we didn't talk about graphics or sound design as well, but the art style in general has just gotten more and more polished and more and more authentic. And it's obviously kind of a taste thing because it is deliberately ugly, so it's kind of like you have to appreciate the irony. Um, I love the authenticity yeah. of the, you know it being a '90s entertainment game with all the yeah. low poly uh, graphics and all the low. All right, let, let's move on. So the next one I believe is the one year birthday bash. Baldi's was kind of quiet for about a year because these updates 1.3, 1.4 they came out over the course of 2018, 2019 we got the birthday bash. So this is after 1.4, um, pretty much the exact same as the original. But now all of the items have been randomly swapped around, and they're all wrapped up in gift boxes. So you, the oh, items are randomized. Hang on, wait, 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 wait a minute. All these basic field trip actually came out before birthday really? bash. Really? Field trip was yeah, before it, birthday bash. I found birthday bash came out in like April 2019. I found a video by Markiplier where he did the field trip, and it came out July 2018. Oh wow, that is way older than I thought it was. All right, field trip demo. Who even remembers the field trip demo? Let me actually get this up because it's been so long, I barely remember it. But I have all I the it. versions here, guys. I played it like once, I think. Yeah, so the field trip demo was... Well, I'm actually going to give you guys a look, because I don't think anyone remembers this. All I'm going to say is that, uh, well, first of all, this is when uh, the full game was starting to be teased. I think the Kickstarter demo was next. Was it? I don't know if that would have been before the birthday bash. I actually never played the Kickstarter demo. It's like that. Screen it still can only choose 1999 graphics. Yeah. Anyway, so there was this thing. But do you guys remember this? Is this... Yeah. I guess this produced, um, Cloudy Copter. You got, like, the, um, the stamina bar, which was just a full green bar. The, uh, you know, the whole thing was kind of, like, different. You're breaking the fourth wall. Go through the wall. Walls. Breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. Okay, you can't come down here. 
You can walk outside and see the skybox as well, like, you know, clearly for the first time. Um, but yeah, basically, the original field trip Let's go has been changed. This is also the first time we saw Bold's right, bus, I think. Do you remember this? Does anyone remember this? Then bring it back to refuel the fire. The I remember this. The fire oh. is, the more points you'll earn. So this was right. basically you got to collect firewood, put it on the fire to keep the fire burning, and the more wood you're carrying, the slower you are. Um, see now I've got two wood. Wow. You get the wow. Um, it's a bully hides behind a tree and he will steal your wood. Um. This is also when Cloudy Copter was first introduced, because Cloudy Copter uh, actually comes and blows on the fire to make it go out quicker. This is when Cloudy Copter was first introduced. And there's a third character who I'm going to show off right now, uh, I, after I, I do saw, this. I saw behind that tree. Mm. Yeah, you can see his arm. I'm going to let him catch I, me. Come third, get me. Uh, also, we're in a bear <laughs> trap. Now we have to, like... I don't remember how to get out of the bear trap. I went though. I, I don't stairs. remember how to go. I don't even think I got caught by any bear traps. Yeah, I think you just have to wait a moment. So the fire's going out. I want those sticks. You see how he just ran off. I'm gonna run after him. Get back yeah, here, yeah. boy. Also, we've got, um... There's, like, signs that say no. It's like an out-of-bounds thing. Yeah. You can go past them, but... Um, yeah. You're, you're in for trouble if you do. Oh, it's too late, guys. He spawned. Oh. So guess oh, what no. happens if you go too far? He spawns. Or, well, this is actually, no, if you... If the campfire goes out, Baldi spawns. He chases you through the forest. And you can see how he gets you there. Um, and that's, that's pretty much that. But then also, if you go too far, uh, Arts and Crafter spawns. They teleport you back to the fire or something. I don't remember. But, and um, yeah. But yeah, now, now that I've refreshed your memory, guys, the original field trip demo, honestly, pretty mid. I mean, you know, graphics, character design, all of that's still consistent and great. But the actual gameplay was just kind of, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't, um, I don't know, yeah. it was okay. But, like, it was kind of boring, especially when integrated into the main game. It just, there wasn't really much reason to do it. Because the you had to, I don't know, the rewards weren't really worth it. And the, um, I don't know, the way it played was just annoying. Because there was no way of getting your stamina back once you'd used it up. Um, and, like, it felt kind of unfair at times. So, I don't know, I'm going to give it, I, like, a D. I'd it's probably like fun. an E. Damn, really. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't really remember. I had a pretty big criticism of this, but I don't remember what it was. I mean, it's got the Baldi charm, but most of the characters are missing in the gameplay is mid. Yeah. I don't know, the I'm not fussed about the character choice. It's got the Baldi charm with the like lines here and the wow. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I'm gonna give it D. I think it's it's mid. It's it's probably one of the worst versions of Baldi. It's just kind of boring and not very replayable. Again, the idea was that is, and this is still a thing in plus. You know, you can go to Baldi's bus at any time, and you can just do a little mini game to get rewards. Uh, but this one was just I don't know. It was unpolished. It, it wasn't wasn't that fun to play. And they yeah they they changed it completely. Um, the field trip is still in plus. It's just completely different. Um, you had. Um, now you've got like the put the animals in the barn and the uh yeah. there is still a campfire one where you have to do math equations instead which is a lot better but yeah the, the field trips in general is something that like i skip a lot of the time i just i don't enjoy them that much um if that's all we want to say i'm gonna move on to birthday bash now birthday bash now guys kickstarter exclusive i don't remember what this was i only tipped I only donated like five dollars, ten dollars to the Kickstarter. You had to donate quite a lot more to get the demo, so I never played this. I'm gonna give that C because I don't remember it. I think it was probably pretty good, but I don't remember it. But yeah, one year birthday bash. What do you think of the birthday bash, Ethan? I think I think it was quite interesting because <laughs> it's it's the same game, but um, yeah, super solid. It's a bit changed to accommodate you know Baldi's birthday, and all the items are random, so your strategy maybe switched up a bit. Yeah. Also, now, in, sorry, also introduced, it also introduced the big old boots, which um, allow you to walk through God. God of Sweep and um, it's first oh, yeah, prize, yeah. yeah. 
the teleportation teleporter, which is known as whatever. What was it known as nowadays? The dangerous teleporter. Yeah, that's it. That's what it introduced. Still, what it's and, called. I didn't know all of those things were introduced here, really. Those two items were back added back into classic after Birthday Bash released. Ah, interesting. We're going to be talking about that later, guys, as well as the characters. Okay, so. I know Birthday Bash might be the most annoying version because it's so RNG, like there's so much randomness in it and it can feel a lot more unfair at times. However, given that everything else is the exact same as Classic awesome. and that it added the, the items that Ethan just described, which I'd forgotten about were actually adding this version, I am given A, I think it's equal. I'd put it in, I'd like put it in a B, mm. maybe below Classic. Was the event where it's like party time and everyone goes to the principal's office also added in this version? Wasn't that a uh, thing here that's, first? That's one of the plus pluses special random events. It's uh, not okay. Really that's full that's game demo then or something like that. Yeah. Okay. No, it was no. challenge demo. It was challenge demo. We'll talk about that. Um. Okay. okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So. Birthday Bash does have, like, you know, where you after you get the full text, you blow out a candle and you go up. And the secret area of the school and collect uh, two more notebooks, and you saw all these baldy balloons. Things, God, whatever. yeah. It's got like yeah. the the really interesting, weird, creepy ending. Um, yeah, but which you, was improved, I think, in classic remaster. But still, yeah. If you get the teleportation teleporter and then use it after you burn out the candle. You can go back to the normal level of the school and then find null or file name two. Yeah. Uh, I for, never like, did secret. that. So when I finally do that in classic remastered it's gonna be a first for me i think i did that one before mm. i'm not sure yeah but um honestly it sounds to me like birthday bash is actually better than classic but i don't know like i'm gonna give them the equal footing think that the state they both have pretty much the same issue but birthday bash adds new content um, that stands strong on its own that enhances the game and kind of you know def like it feels thematically appropriate like with all the gift boxes and party hats and stuff like i honestly I, I don't know i can't i can't put it down for that i don't think um because again like how else would you guys actually just change the gameplay other than just reskinning it because having the items be randomized is actually a brilliant idea the characters and the map are still consistent but now your strategy has to adapt to what you have um it can be unfair but it, i mean it's you know the the idea makes a lot of sense i think i think the execution was all right yeah so I can't, I can't really um, give him much crap for that, to be honest. I'm going to move on, I think, to the... Uh, we're now getting to the good stuff, guys. The demos. So, full game demo was the first after the Kickstarter, right? I don't remember when Kickstarter exclusive happened. I'm going to put that uh, here. Um, I'm not sure if the entire ball is destroyed. The kick Bro, the you are when... crackling, my guy. You are breaking up. Your microphone's just making lots of noises. Bro, why can't I have a... Uh... Actually, I need to look at this. What, what, what was in the Kickstarter exclusive demo? Because I have some exclusive Kickstarter stuff from when I donated, guys. If you actually look at the thumbnail, you will see here that render on the left, that is Kickstarter exclusive. That is not publicly available unless someone's re-uploaded it, which has probably happened, to be fair. But yeah, that was like part of a package that I got for... Okay, Ethan, um... Hold on. I'm just hearing lots of robot noises. Yeah, what's this video by Illutim? So the Kickstarter exclusive was basically the earliest version of Plus. It had the elevator. Um, it had random map generation, possibly? I don't know. Oh, it introduced lockers. Okay, chorkles. Um... Was here for the first time. The alarm clocks. Okay, that's a lot of cool stuff, actually. Um, the Kickstarter exclusive seems pretty similar to the full game demo. So I'm just, I think I'm just going to put it one below wherever I put the full game demo. Triple A is, um, robot farting. He's secretly far named too. Going through a tunnel? I don't know, dude. I have no idea. Hello. Hi, how you doing? I can hear your voice fine, but it's just a separate noise. It's all crackly but yeah super soul i think you're absolutely right about getting more stamina from the states that would have been better for the game balance um 
Yeah, the thing about the field trip is that sticks yes. don't respawn either. The sticks don't regenerate. So once you've run out of sticks nearby, like it's literally just a matter of time before a game over. Um, I mean, I suppose it's good that you can't go on forever, but there is also a time limit. So it's like, you know, you're fa basically forced to lose because of how far away the sticks are. You physically can't really get them. I'm just hearing robot f like farts. Like, what? What is this? There's so many staticky noises on your end, Ethan. That's that's kind of kind of weird. You want to um? Okay. He'll he'll sort it out, guys. Um. In the meantime. Um. The Kickstarter exclusive it was somewhere around here. I don't remember the exact order. I think Kickstarter exclusive might have been before full game. This is like early 2019 now. Oof. You sure? Um, why am I messing? He can literally see me. Alright, well, Ethan had to leave voice chat, guys, which is a shame. Uh, but, you know, he'll be in, in, in text chat, I guess. Ethan, you're welcome back, uh, if you can get your mic working. You are, you are more than welcome to come back. Um, for now, though, I'm just gonna finish, I'm gonna continue with this. So, Kickstarter exclusive. I'm gonna give it a B. It's not nearly as, like, polished graphically, and, like, it, I, I mean, maybe this is just hindsight, but, you know. I don't know. It feels like less of a complete game. Again, like the field trip demo, it's just like part of a game. But I like the new ideas it introduces. The alarm clock, the elevators, the, you know, what have you. The chuckles, you know. Chuckles is annoying as shit, actually. But, uh, you know, decent game mechanic. Um, and the full game demo, I think, would I also give an A. Because I remember this. And I will actually load it up and play it for a bit with you guys. Uh, yeah, that went well, didn't it? You got 40 minutes in voice chat, 30 minutes in voice chat, and then just poof. But you want to come back if you want. I don't know why there are two of these. Windows? Chat? Oh, that's a challenge demo. So this is the original... This is the full game demo. So this is the Baldi's Basics Plus demo before Baldi's Basics Plus was called Baldi's Basics Plus. And I remember this because I created, like, a whole strategy uh, for this. Oh, pause the music. Pause the music. I just remember. I, I remember the map because I created a strategy for this. You can see the controls on what the controls are like. Um, the item thing just says item written in it, and you had five rather than three. I think that's still true in plus. But then the d the elevators, the elevators make that wow wow noise. It was so funny. Man, my mouse is really sensitive. This introduced the random events like the door there and stuff. Um, all the books were green. Oh, do you have to be fa you have to be facing them for you can't pick them up from behind. But yeah, you basically just pick them up. There's eight on this map for some reason. Man, this is a throwback. Oh yeah, and then he just instantly starts off and like, you know, it's a little crazy. Man, I'd forgotten about this. This actually gives me a bit of nostalgia. This version was so much fun. <gasps> this room was a death trap, dude. You have to like go quick here or like he gets you because that's room to dead end. And I have no items, but I remember I created a whole strategy to beat this, and I still don't think I ever actually won. But like, I had a whole like method. The rotating like elevator door was like introduced here. It like turns around, turn around. There's no boulder cases though, and also the textures don't look as good. Um, stream lag? Is the stream lagging? Looks fine to me. The Nokia brick. And we can see what kind of items are where and all that kind of thing. Um. He still hears you know, wherever you go. But yeah, there weren't any new characters in this one. Um, but a couple of new game mechanics and kind of a taste of the overall loop of, you know, Plus, as it is now known. I'm just showing you guys around. I'm going to let him catch me. Um, I don't know why I'm hearing two principles. That wasn't a thing here. I don't know. But yeah, again, this was just a demo. But I think I'd rank it equally with the other games. Again, I think the content expansion was was really cool. And, you know, um, a lot of it is pretty much just the same as the original. It's an interesting blend of the original and plus. Just lots and lots of little things. 
it's what it, what's different most of these versions is that it's just lots and lots of little things. Oh yeah, this is when the outside was introduced, where you can sprint and still have stamina and get it back walking, and also the apple. I believe the apple and the grappling hook were new in this version. You could get a grappling hook, use it on the tree, the apple would drop, and then you could use it to basically completely save yourself from Baldi. Also, the 25 door, the locked door, I don't think that's a thing anymore. The, um, it costs, like, a cent, like, 25, the little coin, you have to use the coin to get through the door. I don't think that's a thing anymore. Um, because that game mechanic was honestly kind of annoying, but what we got instead was the... The double door, the double doors that are one-sided, where you can only go through one way, which made a lot more sense. But yeah, and you can see just kind of like how that works. Well, Man, playing. come back soon. Again, some of these ideas landed, some of them didn't. Uh, but what it did really well was experiment with the Baldi formula, which is why I think I gotta also give it an A. I know it's been very samey, guys, but they're all like it's very close because story, characters, and art style. Uh, are pr they're pretty much all consistent and the same across both. So I'm really judging these just on little details of gameplay. Like, that's the thing that really makes a difference. The randomized jump scare sounds will never get old either. I agree. agree. And yeah, that whistle is ingrained in my brain forever. Yeah. Alright. So, Baldi's Basics Challenge Demo was next. Who remembers this one? If you go back right into the archives of Mr. Matt, you will find... They're currently on the featured page. You will find all of my old videos on, you know, the demos and whatnot. Um, I did a live stream way back in the day, way back in the day, two years ago, April 2020, um, when this thing released. Um, and this is when the Kickstarter was in full effect. And yeah, the map was introduced here. This is the first thing where the map was a thing. This is what polished, you know, features a plus. You had, um, what else did you have? I literally didn't play it for, like, half the stream. What the hell is this? Um, the detention intervals, I think, got nerfed a little before this, but I don't actually know for sure. Um, the lockers were a thing here. But yeah, the, the, the challenge demos were three very bizarre and unique game modes. Um that were, were all functioned differently. They introduced a bunch of new items and kind of dynamics on how bodies could be played, which was really interesting. I think I beat the full game down. This is the one that I never beat because this was actually pretty difficult. And all of these three challenge modes, they are still in plus. The challenge modes are in plus. Uh, so you can play more polished versions of the challenge modes in Baldi's Basics Plus with all of the new benefits of Plus. I've never played them though. I only played the challenge demos back like here. You know, I'll even I'll open it right now to show it off because I want to do that. I will show it off right now. Pause the music again. Check this out. Check this out. I said all these messages at the start. You get the whole the Plus. You know, hype. You had the demo. speedy challenge the where you had to get. So everything seen here is subject to change. Yeah. You had the, the, the plus. You had the speedy challenge, which I'll show you. You have to collect 25 notebooks. And both you and Baldi are super fast. Check this out. Also, the Baldicators are a thing. But like, look how fast we are. Like, it was absolutely crazy. Like, how crazy is that? Welcome Yet the stealthy challenge where you're stuck in school after hours. Also, I gotta remember the map was introduced here. And there, Baldi's basically just in the office. The principal's office. And there are, like, 20 principles of the thing just around. You can see them all on your map. Um, and if any of them see you, regardless, you don't have to be sprinting. If any principles see you at all, you get put in detention. And then they, they basically just teleport you straight to Baldi. Oh, man. I'd forgotten about this. Oh, that's awkward. Am I going to have to use up another dirty chalk? Okay, good. Oh, my God. I'm going to literally see him through the walls. But yeah, this this mode was a little crazy. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to do it, aren't I? It's best to use the chalks in, like, the corridors, like, on the corners and stuff. But yeah, like, Baldi's basically just trapped in the office. 
and he'll get you. He'll he'll de demolish you if uh, he sees you, or if any principal sees you, he, he teleports you into the detention room. Obviously, that's what he does. Man, I'm really running out of these. Uh oh. Oh man, I gotta stay in the cloud because they, they obviously they can't see through here. This item, by the way, this is still in Baldi's Basics Plus. No one ever uses it because it's just not that good an item. It's not that useful. I took a risky play there. Um, I literally have not touched this in like years, and I'm already acing it because I'm just so good at Baldi's now. I'm busting, bro. But we, we need to get more. Uh, we need to get more of these because I do not have enough. How have I gotten this far? Like, I remember I never beat this. Like, I never beat any of the challenge modes because I struggle with them so much. Where do we even go? Where's the last... Man, do you remember this, guys? I mean, this again, some of this is still in plus, but man. Honestly, I think this might be the first S tier. And I'm replaying it just to show you because it, it's so underrated and so unknown. And it's just like, it's one of the best, dude. It's one of the best. I don't know why I'm collecting these there. I, I'm not really using them much. Okay, good. Well, the prince might see me, even though his back was turned to me, because the sprites are like 2D and all that. Um, dude, I need to get more of these. I've got 7 out of 7. Oh, I can get out now. But where's the exit, dude? i got to go back the way I came. So it's down on the right. Oh, man, but there's so many of them now. I think more spawn as time goes on. Even though he's going past me, he won't see me, right? Oh, no, never mind. Okay. Oh. I gotta go down there. I gotta make it to this room without being spotted. But yeah, the game's very generous. It's got even, like, lockers and stuff. You got the lockers, which, again, not the most useful, sadly, because you need the no-squeak to avoid Baldy with them. And you got, like, the, you know, water fountains as well. Am I gonna beat this? I never beat this, or, like, in the original. Like, I struggled, but I, I think I got this. Oh. No being in school after hours in the halls. Too bad, man. Wow, you did it. Baldi gives your performance an up. See if you can win them all. I can't believe I actually beat... Did I beat that one? Because I don't remember. Welcome to the Baldi's Basics. But yeah, and then you've got grapple. Your legs might be broken, but thankfully, you're equipped with an infinite use grappling hook. So this is the same thing, but it's just a regular Baldi level, like the uh, full game demo. But you can't walk. Your WSD is disabled, so you have to use a grappling hook to go around. Where the fuck is- OH MY GOD! Hello! Bro, he sp he just spawn killed me. Bro, sp bro spawn killed me though. Deadass. Also, that is unfortunate, Duncan. It's- everything's looking fine for me, so I'm not quite sure what's- If you guys- if there's a problem with the stream, if it just happens to be you two, I should probably check that out. Yeah, the grappling hook works in a really interesting way. Um, it speeds, it accelerates the further away it is. So you can either, you know, go like short distance or try and go like much longer distance. And you can also, you can fire multiple at once. And if they're like pulling against each other, they'll just snap like straight up. They will just snap. Um, why are we here? This is useless. Yeah, you can snap. Like, yeah, they make a, the sound that Baldi's ruler does, so. That's neat. This is a closed door. Why am I here? But yeah, if the, prin the principal would just canonically clone himself. That sounds like a principal thing to do. He's all about law and order. What better way to ensure the school is secure than to have him be everywhere? But yeah, this one has like two elevators and seven notebooks, I think. Um, no, it is four. It's got four elevators. It's a big old map. You can also do this, which is just insane. Also, is that what I think it is? This is the, um, the old, the old door. Just the, I love when he had just completely untextured areas in the game. I, and I hope this stays. We've seen a bit of it in Classic Remastered, but it's like, this is literally what the, the textures look like in development. Uh, that's really funny. But yeah, we can shoot the grapple through a door, no problem. Although that happens sometimes, you've, you've got to be aware of that. There we go, we've got a B soda now. 
Oh no, Mrs. Pomp. This is the first time that Miss Pomp was ever shown. I think. Either that or the full game demo. No, she was in the full game demo. Um, Mrs. Pomp was in the full game demo and she is horrifying. So you can see the items now. They don't have the the thing anymore. The item is just a blank square. But also, they don't... Are you serious? The items don't... Um, there's five slots instead of three. So the item slots were very generous. And because you get five whole slots and four, because you got the grappling hook, the grappling hook's OP. Even if it's your only four movement, it's really good. Um, I, I feel like this is the first S tier on our list. I feel like the challenge demos just were so creative and so interesting and incorporate most of, like, the polish and balance of Plus. Like, it is a lot more balanced and a lot more fair in how it plays, even in this version, before, you know, more of Plus. Um, I feel like this is where, you know, Baldi's really gets, hits that S tier, in my opinion. God, we haven't even seen Baldi. Like, this place is so big. There are some balancing issues. This is now probably too easy, this particular challenge, because you can basically just never see Baldi. Or maybe it's because I'm playing really badly, and I'm not even trying, because we haven't even, like, collected most of the notebooks. Where the hell do I go? I need to go this way. Um, I think this gets pretty difficult as it progresses, actually. Um... But yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's kind of wild. I don't know where to go. So you can go. Oh yeah, you can go down here. Oh, but you can also go here. Where do I go, bro? Um, man, I missed the map from uh, cla in Classic Remastered. I've missed using this map. Oh, I hear him. I actually hear him now. Zero minutes left. Oh, uh, yeah. Time's up. Now, Mrs. Pomp, the thing is, I think, wasn't Pomp in plus first? I don't think she works the exact same way e here as she does in plus. I don't remember. I thought she was in plus first. With the whole scary mechanic. Um... Yeah, man, I'm running circles around Baldi today. Let's just uh, go through this guy. Give me something great. Come on, just take an item, my guy. Like, okay, but this is dumb. I uh, I can't get through him apparently. But yeah, like, what do you guys think? Do you think you'd give this an S? I would give it an S, but that's a pretty generous rating. There's Baldi. Ah, oh, shit. Well, this is bad. Wait, this goes nowhere. Where do I go, bro? I just wasted a B-soda. Uh-oh. Hi. Alright, we got it. Oh, man. Baldi got me. Hold on, I, I, I got a, I got a test thing. I, I need to see how Mrs. Pomp works. Also, did you, did you guys remember this? Do you remember this? That was a thing. That existed. Long ago. It's a bully was blocking the way I needed to go, I think. I'm not even gonna collect- actually, I probably should collect notebooks, because I think you have to do that to initiate the game. Um... But yeah, I, uh... I want to see how Mrs. Pomp works. Anyways, you get the you get the idea. I'm just gonna tab out for a second. I'm sure she'll find us. Um, look at this. So <coughs> I'm gonna give um, I'm gonna give the challenge demo uh, S tier. I'm gonna give challenge demo S tier. I really think it's the first S tier. Um, dude's built like a literal wall. Honestly, though. Um, yeah. Right? She's like a crayon with a head. It's really weird. It is really weird. She's the third, actually. You've got Bolly, Principal of the Thing, and Mrs. Pomp. Those are the three teachers of the entire universe. They are the only teachers that exist. I'm waiting for Mrs. Pomp, bro. Where is she? Yeah, she's like a, a pencil. It's bizarre. Come on, gimme. Uh, 
Um, so now we're talking about the last two, uh, Plus and Classic Remastered. And here's the thing. Baldi's Basics Plus, um, Plus is yet to be finished. But in its current state, I think Plus is the best version of Baldi's Basics, alright? I think, I think Plus is absolutely S tier as well. Just because it is so much more polished and, like, balanced. And there's so much content, like, there's so many new events. It's more random, but it's also more fair. You run into less unwinnable situations. You've still got the challenge demos within it. You've still got, you know, the fog and the, the, the flood and all that. You've got new characters. Um, also, the quarter looked higher res here. They, they changed the, the models. Again, it's more authentic as well. The random generation is just fantastic. Uh, it is way too quiet out here. I have seen no one. We may not. We may not see Mrs. Pomp. That might. That may not be happening. At least Baldi should run into us, right? But look at this. How crazy is that? Um, principal is. Is that not the same thing as a teacher? I don't know. All right. But yeah. Um. But yeah. Plus. Plus is my favorite. And um, that leaves us with classic remastered. Now I gotta say. I think Classic Remastered is good for different reasons. Dude, this is this is not happening. I think Classic Remastered... Oh yeah, and that's when yeah, we had that. Challenge demo. But uh, I think Classic Remastered is also S tier. But the thing is, I feel like it's difficult to qualify them. Maybe I'm just being a bit generous. So I'm actually going to move everything down a tier. Because I think I'm being a bit generous here. Let's really qualify this. Alright. I think plus. If, if we say if we move if we move everything down one tier, I think that might be a more accurate and fair description because, as good as the uh, original games like ours as all these older versions are, Classic Remastered has so many like secrets and Easter eggs and little just things to find within the game, and it's also a conglomeration of every version. Of Baldi's Basics. It's a conglomeration of everything that existed before into one polished and packaged product. It's probably like the definitive Baldi's Basics. But I think Plus is going to be like the final version of Baldi's Basics. Because Plus is going to have new things exclusive to Plus. It's the only one that costs money. And that's got to count for something. Um, Plus has been like just... I don't know. It, it, it's been the most interesting to see develop. Uh, again, as you guys know, uh, I have been watching, you know, the game develop for a long time since it started with stream after stream on all the things added and changed. And I don't know. The um, Classic Remastered. Classic Remastered is, you know, I would say better in terms of getting a wide variety of Bolly's experiences and introducing people to the game. And it's got so many exclusive and unique little secrets, Easter eggs, and even a bit of story and lore, which really make it stand out. But I think Bolly's Basics Plus is the more definitive, like, you know, narrow game experience. Like, Classic is still, you know, pretty unfair on some of the harder difficulties, but Plus is pretty much always fair um, in terms of gameplay and game balancing. So it's, it's a, I don't know, it's a bit of a tough choice. Um, I think they're good for different reasons, but I think that's my final list, guys. I think that's going to be uh, my tier list of the Baldi versions. Let me get the music back up. I knew something was missing. I'm not going to lie, I have a bit of a headache. I don't know why, my head kind of hurts. So I need to go get something to drink. I think I need more hydration. But what I'm going to do is uh, this. Sharing my Baldi tier lists here. Feel free to join in. Hashtag uh, Baldi tier list, I guess. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. I think that's how I'd rank the games. I think I think they're all good, except you. But uh, I think uh, I think these two are the standout. I mean, again, everything that is the challenge demo is in plus. And again, these ones are a little bit less balanced. Uh, I don't know, maybe I could put that one there, but... Eh. I don't know, I don't think it's 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 significant enough with the, the things it added. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of Baldi's versions. Guys, I'm gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna do the last two tier lists. Man, I spent way longer on that than I thought I would. I thought we would have done, like, two of the tier lists now. But, man, I got a bit of a headache. I need to get something to drink. Um, 
But yeah, I think that's a great QOTD as well. I asked you guys, what is your favorite version of Bolly's Basics and why? And Super Soul says Classic Remastered as a bit of almost every version and a lot of secrets are fun to hunt for as well as fun content. Again, the fun settings add a whole layer of content to the three modes already. It's great, yeah. Um, S tier character is the hairless cream Bolly should have used. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's no minus. What, Pips, what on earth are you talking about? Um... Tell you what, guys, um, I, I'm gonna go AFK, but if we got time, I might even play a bit of each game. I haven't played Plus in a while. I think I need to do a Plus stream sometime soon. But, uh, I'm gonna go AFK. If you wanna share your tears, do so here. Uh, maybe Ethan will come back and chat, but either way, we'll, uh, I got, I got my, uh, last two tier lists here. Yeah, I just, I need to refill my hydration. So, everyone take five. If you are enjoying the stream, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, share us your friends, do all that. Support's appreciated. Chat the links in the description below. Today's charity shout-out goes to Macmillan Cancer Support. These guys are a UK-based charity that is aiming to support people suffering with cancer. Uh, it's a very important thing. Cancer is, is, is an awful thing. And, you know, if, you know, you donate, if you can, uh, you know, support this organization. Uh, that goes towards people's, you know, health, physically, mentally. Uh, and also, you know, if your son you know he has cancer, you know, there, there's a lot of good, you know, insult resources and information here for you. So do check it out. Um, and yeah, obviously, you can win a shout out link below, just like that. Um, if you have a go at the QOTD, my Discord server's there, my other channels are there. It's all there. It's all in the description. I will be right back. I'm going to get some, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some, god, my headache, I'm gonna get some hydration, I think it's these headphones, I think it's these headphones being uncomfortable to wear, I bought these cheap ass headphones, and I'm paying the price now, should have spent the money for something that you would be less sucky, oh boy, imagine a four part Bolly series, like Bolly's Multiplied Division, Quantum Physics Edition, that'd be funny, yeah, that would be absolutely amazing. But yeah, um, we're going to do tier lists on items and characters next. Again, you can do these yourself as well. All the tier lists are linked below. I'll be right back, guys. I'll, I'll, not even five minutes. I'll be like three minutes, okay? See you in a moment.
Hello, I'm back. I don't know how long I was, but I don't think I needed to take long. I, uh, oof. I need to hydrate and go to the toilet and stuff. I feel way more comfortable now. I feel like the pace of the stream has been kind of dead, because, like, I was expecting more, like, voice chat collaborations for this. I didn't get any. And, like, I've been hella unfocused. I've been busy with other things, and, like, my mind's in other places right now, because I, I, I don't expect the stream to be long and, like, I've got other things to do, but actually, uh... I might take a bit more time. I thought this would be like 90 minutes. I might go for like 120. <sighs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm not like in the zone like I normally am. So sorry about that. Um, but welcome back, guys. Um, let's just get on with this. Let's, okay, let's just get on with this now. Let's pick up the pace because people are bored and tired of waiting. Uh, if Ethan wants to come back and voice chat, he will. Uh, if you guys want to post your own tier lists on Hydration Nation, Discussion 2 is popping off right now. I'm going to be sharing the rest of mine there. Shall we do characters or items first? Let's do items, alright? In fact, no, let's do characters. Characters or items? Characters or items, guys? What do we think? What do we think? Characters or items? I can't decide. I'm gonna say... Um... Dude. Need more hydration. Bully's basics anatomy. That'd be funny. Bully basics and war. That's very kind of you guys to offer, but it's too late now. Stream's gonna be over soon, and you know, like I'm supposed to prepare that kind of thing in advance. It just it doesn't work out very well. Yeah, I'm actually gonna do characters first. In characters before items makes sense. Um, yeah, I because I hadn't ordered the description. That's why. Yeah. All right, let's rank characters. Characters, uh, and what I'm gonna do is add. I'm gonna. I, I want to be fair. I'm gonna have an E and an F tier as well, even if I don't use them. Last time we didn't use D or F. We did use E. Uh, do with that information what you will. E. So E tier, F tier, F E D C B A S. It's same, same as always. So, Baldy. Baldy is, I think, S tier. I think that's an easy S tier. Baldi is like a horror game, video game antagonist um, that is very simple, but very effective. I think his simplicity and his minimalist kind of design um, is exactly what makes him um, such a great threat. Uh, he is consistent. His facial expression, it never changes. Once you get that math question wrong, after, you know, he's a very, very charming, polite, and friendly, like, outward personality until you get the math wrong. And then he's just blank-faced. He's just got a blank stare the entire game. And, you know, the rule of slapping, it gets faster to build up tension, but other than that, it's consistent. And he always moves, you know, the same amount. It's just the frequency that changes. And, 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 and you know, Baldi, he's, he's kind of, you know, stillness in that regard, I think, is something that makes him, um you know, so menacing, um, but obviously the, 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 the thing that really pushes him to S beyond, you know, oh, he, he looks cool, he sounds appropriate, his voice fits, you know, his design, his, like, concept is like a creepy school, school teacher, um, you know, the freaking Edward Scissorhands and the, the ruler and all that, his ruler is his, like, weapon of choice, the tool, lots of good, like, you know, thematic, yeah, symbolism and all that stuff, the actual core gameplay is, like, slender, right? He's chasing you, obviously, but the way his pathing works, especially in newer versions, is really nice and dynamic because he's actually quite intelligent. It's not super difficult, but, like, there have been times where Baldi has outwitted me, where Baldi has cut me off. He's, like, you know, circuited around me. I've had times where Baldi has, you know, gotten ahead of me because, uniquely, his whole thing is sound. Obviously, he sees you and he follows you, same as any other horror character. But something that sets him apart from a lot of other horror characters, although there are other characters in you know, horror games who do this, is that he hears everything. And it's like, he hears everything, and he can also tell exactly who made what sound. And the whole system of the Baldicators, of any noise you make, any little sound, any door opening, any interaction with an NPC, it will create a noise that he will lock onto. And he knows exactly where that is. And that keeps the game fair, because what that means is that you can't just do a few turns and then basically stay out of sight and easily beat the whole game because he'll never actually see you. It means he's basically almost always onto you. There is very, 
rarely a moment when Baldi is not chasing you. So it really adds to the challenge and you have to make use of every moment. And we'll talk about this more um, with the items because obviously there are specific items to affect, you know, um, his hearing, which you can use. And they're really important. But yeah, I think just Baldi's whole design is really brilliant. It's not that complicated and it doesn't need to be. He has a whole... He chases you, he can hear anything, there's a whole system of priority of certain sounds that he will or won't hear, and where he'll go, like what sounds he'll go to first, and the priority order, that whole thing is actually quite nuanced. Um, again, just his stern demeanor, and the randomized jump scare sounds as well, like, he's just an excellent character, and I think Baldi's character strength as a character really shines, because a lot of casual fans and people who aren't familiar with Baldi's, this is like the only character they know. He's the titular character, of course. He's on the logo of the game. But also, you know, in YouTube thumbnails and stuff, no one ever uses any of these other characters for thumbnails. It's always Baldi and Baldi only, almost every time. All these other characters? Meh. So yeah, Baldi for me, instant S tier. And yet he can't see through windows. True. I, I feel like he should be able to see through windows, but in most cases it doesn't matter. It is funny, though, that he, he can't really see uh, windows. But yeah, this list is going to be, like, updated when Bolly gets expanded. I guess this is mostly pretty up-to-date, but yeah. Um, Bolly with a protractor throwing that thing like a frisbee, and it slices you like a guillotine? Dude, that would be crazy. If Bolly had a ranged attack, again, I feel like that would break the game balance, but maybe that could be like another character. That would be quite funny. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the, the dithering on his face. The effect of dithering is really effective in this game, yeah. But yeah, he can't see moving through the walls, but he has the hearing. And it, it, it's great, because it offers a fair but challenging game. <sighs> Alright, let's talk principle of the thing. Now, there's something brilliant about Baldi's Basics, which has been consistent since day one. And I really think I should make a video essay on Continuity Era talking about this. Every single character other than Baldi is equally a help and a hindrance to the player and it depends on the situation and it depends on what items you have and it depends on where you are it is this brilliant uh, duality every single character does something to affect the game loop that can be either helpful or a hindrance um exactly super soul exactly yeah hey <laughs> i guess i got the right angle very funny Louis. So, for example, principle of the thing is annoying, right? Because if you break any of the rules, and sprinting especially, he is so annoying. Um, principle used to be, like, really bad, to be honest, and really unfair. But he's been nerfed in, like, Plus and Classic Remastered. There's a certain amount of time you have to be sprinting or whatever for him to notice you breaking the rules. Uh, he also has, obviously, the sound cue, the whistling. Um, but also, his actual AI movement... Uh, now prioritizes locations he hasn't been to in a while, so he's a lot more consistent in terms of how he plays. He can appear near you early on, which is a bit random, but like again, that's just just start the game. You know, sometimes it just happens that way. Um, but yeah, principle of the thing has been you know rebalanced a lot since, um, and um, yeah, he um, the principle. So obviously, it's annoying because he disrupts your game. If you break any slight rule, so just, just sprinting for a millisecond, he'll take you to the uh, detention. It's very difficult to lose him. He's faster than everyone else in the game, except Baldi on high speeds, I guess, and got a sweep. Um, but yeah, he'll teleport you to the detention room, which is always around the middle of the map, usually, especially in the original. And it's basically an easy place for you to get trapped and killed by Baldi, because there's only one exit. Um, so he's really annoying in that regard. But there's on occasion, he can save you from Baldi, and he can really, um, actually get you out of a tight spot, and it's very easy to trigger him. Um, but yeah, having the whole mechanic of you just sitting in detention, while thematically on point with the whole school thing, it's kind of boring. Uh, and I think, you know, Miss Man's trying to give you more to do in detention with the character descriptions and the posters. So it's like, oh, uh, if you're, you know, bored in detention and you haven't got keys to get you out or whatever, you know, the tape player's in there. So there's a strategy there. And also, all of the characters' game mechanics are explained on posters in that room only. So you can sit and read while you're waiting to get out if you don't know how the game plays. So it's actually really good in that regard, but that's not really the character. I mean, I guess it kind of is, but yeah, the whole, the principal's whole thing, I don't know, I'm going to give him an A. 
I don't think he's that bad. I think he's kind of annoying. And I wish the rules weren't so strict, but I feel like there's a lot of things that this gets spot on. I mean, he's, again, in, in the original, maybe a, like a C or a D, because he kind of sucked. But because his AI's been, you know, improved, because he's a bit more lenient now, and because, you know... For example, in the lights out fun setting, he glows, so the game's fair. You get, like, warning if he's coming around a corner. You know, the principle is... Um, a really good balance to the game because it adds value to items that are in faculty only rooms. You have to risk getting put in detention to get the good items, and you know, he uh, the, the the detention room is is very useful. It's got the tape player in you know most versions in the original map. It's got the posters in all versions, so you can see which characters are active. Um, even if you're familiar with the game, you've read them all before. You can see just get at a glance, get a sense of which characters you're dealing with. It's very helpful. So I'm gonna give him a. Um, Playtime! Playtime is annoying as shit. I fucking hate playtime. There is one thing about playtime that has been improved recently, and that is that you can now actually move while doing jump rope. You can actually move distance while you're jumping. Uh, that's a very new addition, and I appreciate it. But as well as that, um, playtime obviously, especially on hard mode and classic remaster, but even in the originals, she would stop you for so much time and you wouldn't be able to move or do anything. And until scissors were introduced, which is like 1.3 or something, uh, it was before us first person, I think, like you could not stop us. You had to do the jump ropes. In newer versions, again, it's all been balanced a lot better. You know, you can use scissors to cut her rope. You can use, um, got a sweep or first prize to escape from her. But she's really annoying. Um... And the only upside to playtime is that your stamina regenerates. Because of the time it takes to do jump rope, unless you have a way out, your stamina regenerates because you're standing still. However, you could get the exact same effect by just standing still anywhere on your own terms. Which is why playtime is really annoying and ultimately, I'm gonna give her like... I'm gonna give her C tier. She's a good like nuisance, a good disruption, and there's lots of ways of dealing with her, but she's just kind of a pest. She just kind of slows you down. And, I don't know, if playtime was removed, I don't think it would be a big deal. And we've proven this because she's one of the rarest characters in Plus. Playtime only has, like, a 50% chance of appearing on Floor 2, and that's it. Playtime rarely appears in Plus because she's probably, like, the least helpful out of pretty much all the characters. I'm actually going to give her a D. I don't know. I don't hate playtime, and I don't wish to see her removed from the game. But I wouldn't mind seeing her being reworked just a little bit more to push her up to a C or a B and maybe be, like, actually helpful in some way. Because you can regain your stamina by just standing at anywhere on your own terms. Playtime is just annoying and a pest and slows you down. And she's just kind of one of those things in the game that drags you down. I've been killed by her so many times. Um, alright. Let's keep it moving. It's a bully. It's very different to a lot of the characters. He will just teleport and stand still in certain ways, blocking them uh, to give you an item. Um, I think he's pretty good. I think having a bully type character is essential for Baldies because it's set in a schoolhouse. Um, he, you know... The fact that he takes a random item is annoying, but actually, I believe he prioritizes coins. So if you have a coin, it's basically guaranteed that it'll take the coin instead. In my experience, he always takes the coin. So, I think that kind of makes items in general, like all items, more useful. And I think he really enhances the game loop, you know... Um, by giving more use to items, like, you know, never go empty-handed or you'll be vulnerable to him. Because, again, pathways and corridors are important in the game and routing. And, again, he can be annoying, he pops up randomly, but he's not the hardest to deal with. Um, and, again, the principle, I actually, you know, I'm putting the principle in S tier. Fuck it, because the principle also has this thing which was added, like, ages ago in... I don't even remember when this was added, it might have been in the older versions. If he sees the bully bullying you, if the, you close enough close to bully and he says, give me something great, he'll say, no bullying in the halls, and get rid of the bully. So they have like an interaction, the dynamics are excellent. I'm going to give bully A tier. I think he's just a simple, annoying, but you know, uh, fair to deal with kind of thing. Like, you know, if you don't bring any items, it's your own fault. You need to stack up on items. The game's kind of encouraging that. And I think, you know, actually, I'm going to put principal in S. I think his, his whole play thing, you know, he's core, he's central to the game. Uh, I'm going to be generous, I'm going to play time and see, but yeah, that's, I think that's how that looks, Bully's pretty good, stealing lunch money, exactly, he's a snip the skipping ropes, yeah, um, Matt getting a Skype call, what, no, no I don't have, I've not used Skype in years, what, he used to punish you for eating a zesty bar, yeah, glad that was removed, I don't remember that, but yeah, snipper your skipper, diamond chef, Cory, hello, welcome to the stream, how do you do, um, 
All right. So next up is I want to go with like the the original characters before the plus characters. I'm sure I remember who I believe. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so arts and crafters. Now, Arts and Crafters is really unique and interesting because they will do nothing for most of the game. Arts and Crafters only comes into it in the end game. So once you've collected all seven notebooks, Arts and Crafters will become jealous and try and take them. So their unique thing is that if they see you, not if you see them, if they see you, they will become aggressive and start spinning around you and teleport you. And in the final stage of the game, it's a very interesting curveball to throw in that can be both a help and a hindrance. This has been reworked several times, and I remember that in Plus, it was patched shown now. Instead of just teleporting you randomly like they did in Classic, Arts and Crafters will teleport you, and it will teleport Baldi. It will teleport both you and Baldi. It will arrange you two near an exit. So, Baldi, you will be teleported near one of the three exits that you, you haven't been to. So, they will take you to one of the exits. Um, that you haven't been to. It's pretty, honestly, I'm in Classic Remastered, I'm pretty sure it's almost always the one you started at. It pretty much always, it puts you near an exit, which is helpful, but it also puts Baldi near you, just a few steps behind. So it basically takes you and Baldi and it just sets you both up in a specific area now. Um, and it's a bit randomized because there's a few different exits to choose from, but there's only four in total. I think it doesn't do ones that you've already been to. Um, but yeah, Arts and Crafters... Um, in the various versions, though, they don't always teleport Baldi as well. And sometimes, I think in Plus, as opposed to Classic Remastered, where it always puts you and Baldi in specific positions, it teleports both you and Baldi within a randomized range. It, it, it's slightly different in my experience. It could just be due to map generation, really. But sometimes, although Baldi will be put close to you, it gives you an exit. And sometimes you can use Arts and Crafters to get away from Baldi depending on the version and everything, you can get away from Baldi pretty well. So I'm going to give Alice and Crafters an A. I think it's very interesting that they only come into the end game. They're just kind of a, a, a dormant entity before that. And they have a very unique mechanic that can, again, is the prime example of being both a help and a hindrance. Um, a tier. God, maybe even S tier. I don't know. I'm going to give them S tier. They're not incredible. They could be a lot more with Alice and Crafters. They could be doing something in the early game. But as it is, that alone is A tier, I think. I'm going to give that. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give a bully B tier, actually, because B for bully. And also, this is just a little a little better, a little more advanced. And I like that. Bully simple, but effective. Um, yeah. Did he teleport bully in the original? I don't, I remember, I don't remember. It's 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 been changed a few times. Um, got a sweep. Livy thinks C for got a sweep. I'll put playtime back in D. And then got a sweep C. Well. Got a sweep is the ultimate chaotic force in Baldi's basics. Got a sweep will randomly activate, randomly travel around, and they will pick up whatever characters are in their way. Because of how movement on the brush works, uh, characters can get stuck on them. And got a sweep can either save you or completely ruin your day. And quite frankly, given how random got a sweep is. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a D as well. I think Goddess Sweep is so random, they're more of a hindrance because more often than not, I've been swept into Baldi or Baldi has been swept into me by Goddess Sweep. And what happens a lot of the time is that Goddess Sweep will run into me or Baldi and it'll sweep us away from each other. And I'll be like, oh great. They'll go into a room and then they'll just sweep right back where they came from and just undo whatever good that they just did. And they're just kind of annoying in that regard. And, and Goddess God Sweep just kind of is very random. Like, Goddess Sweep is a very random force that, while not activating frequently, can completely ruin a run just out of the blue. Uh, and dealing with Goddess Sweep is very difficult. The only item that can help you is these, but sometimes you want to not have these so that you can use first prize. And this is a strat that I'm using. First prize is Goated. First prize, great game mechanic. So, the um, the six you can see on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the original six Bollies characters. It became seven when first prize was added. First prize, you know, turns very slowly, but when they see you, they will go towards you at very high speeds and push you down long corridors. They're really useful in big open spaces going down long hallways. Um, and I believe in certain versions of the game, 
a first prize is critical to actually winning because you need first prize to get distance from Baldi if you don't have any items. And by the time you've gotten to seven notebooks and going towards the exits, you're usually lacking items. So I would say God of Sweep is it's critical to beating the game in certain versions and editions. Um, got, a, uh, got a sweep, sorry, first prize. First prize also, I haven't talked about the actual character design very much because I just completely forgot about it. I've been so focused on gameplay. I haven't talked about the actual characters. Um, a lot of these characters aren't very iconic. They just fall into good stereotypes. You've got the bully, you've got the annoying child, you know, the janitor. Uh, Arts and Crafts is a very creative one, like having a sock puppet. Again, it's got a very preschooly vibe. It's the kind of thing you do in preschool. First prize being a science experiment was a really unique thing, like a fair thing, hence its name. And I like that it's, you know, actually got a backstory. It's a robot designed to hug people. I wonder who made it. Maybe Playtime or someone. Um, but yeah, I find it really interesting um, that um, First Prize has this actual, like, kind of concept. It's a very unique concept. It's a robot designed to hug people. It's like a science fair experiment. We, there aren't any other robot characters. Um... And also, they just had these hilarious voice lines. It's like, I am gumming gumming for you. I desire your image. Will you marry me? Oh, no. I have lost you. And the voice is brilliant. I haven't talked about the voices enough. Um, the principal is a pretty bland voice, but I think that's kind of the point. He's just kind of a tired teacher. It's a bully's voice is great. He's just kind of mocking. Playtime suits her. Gotta sweep is so kind. I want to say I'm gonna give Gotta sweep a C just because the voice and the whole Gotta sweep 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 is so funny and so iconic, even though they're really annoying in the gameplay. Uh, but yeah, first prize. Great concept for a character. Great, you know, visual design, audio design, like the whirring, you know, the noise that they make. Backstory, game mechanic. Sometimes he can push you into Baldi, and that rarity is annoying, but there's an item for that. I'm gonna give him S tier. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give first prize an S tier. First prize is absolutely goated. Um We're now moving on to the plus exclusive characters, although I believe some of these are actually in classic remastered. I think these three. I think these two are the ones exclusive to plus right now. So Beans. Hmm. Exactly, Livy, yeah. Oh yeah, the Corn Reaper! Dude, who remembers the Corn Reaper? Man, that's an obscure one. I don't think I even have that, but that was one of the other field trip demos. I don't think even I am I don't think I even have that one. I think that was an old version of Plus. You can't even get that anymore. Honestly, I prefer first prize not smashing you into a wall to hug you. True, because that makes a noise spill up Baldi, but I just think that's fair game balancing. Yeah, it's it's a text to speech program. I don't remember what it's called. Creeper Hacks, welcome to the stream, guys! Reminder that if you are enjoying, leave a like. Eight viewers and only two likes. What is this? Guys, I'm going to make you a deal. Ten likes, and I will throw some attempts at Classic Remastered right now, because I've not been doing that, and I've been meaning to, but I've literally found no time to even make progress with that. Um, I'll throw some attempts at it on this stream if we can get ten likes. I'll do it. Uh, I'm a desperate man. It says two here. I don't know if we've actually got more. It says one on my phone, so yeah, I feel like it's probably out of date, but I'm just saying, you know. Um, beans. Beans is an interesting one. Beans, I'm going to give a C, I think. Beans is kind of like a more developed version of Playtime. Um, and I think Beans is very interesting because Beans, okay, very goofy. Absolutely cursed design. I feel like his character design doesn't really fit the game quite as much Because he's hand-drawn and there isn't really a significant a dithering effect on him He looks a bit different to every other character in the game And I feel like for that reason his 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 design needs to be changed because he doesn't really fit in like his design is inconsistent with the art style of the game So I feel like that needs to be tweaked. I feel like a texture like a texturizer kind of thing could fix that to make him look more like the others. Um, but like it, it just, he doesn't look consistent. So I got to take away from that. The sound design is pretty good though. He has lots of voice acting. He's got loads of voice lines, a really unique voice. And he's just kind of like this goofy kid who's always chewing gum, spitting gum. That's his thing. And he's got this hilarious like waddle. He's like, oh no, don't let the grown ups spot this. I skip all day, I say. I skip to push the pain away. And he's, he's kind of tragically funny. Uh, he's even got like the balloon boy propeller hat as well. It's actually DD, same colors. Um, but yeah, prepare for something awesome. 
I think the way he charges up his gum and the poom, and he gives you like a t certain time to react as a projectile. Again, having a projectile move through the corridors, that's something unique to him, I believe. There aren't really any other examples of that. Um, and I think that's very interesting. And I think the way it works into the environment is really good. Sometimes, you know, you get hit by gum and you happen not to have scissors. You can't deal with it. It's annoying. It's unfair. It happens. And you get caught by Baldi because it slows you down. But equally, he can gum other characters and slow them down. And there have been times where he slowed down Baldi or got a sweep and absolutely saved the game. On the other hand, he's an absolute menace. And dodging his gum isn't always as easy as it looks. So, I think I'm going to give him a B. I think he's up there with It's a Bully. I just wish his, like, design was more consistent. Um, and I wish he had a bit more personality. I don't know. I feel like he's got a lot of voice lines and stuff, but it's like, we don't really know anything about him other than, like, oh, he is the kid who chews gum. He's just not very memorable. Why is he called Beans? What's Beans got to do with anything? It's just not a very memorable character, to be really honest with you guys, at all. Um, and a definitely an annoying one. That is not the hardest to deal with, though. I think I think his gameplay is fair. So I'm gonna give him a B, but yeah, I don't know. I think I think I think I think um, Gumboy is kind of, you know, he's not very memorable. Um, exactly. Yeah, he was drawn by someone else. So I I feel like they should add a texture or something to make him more dithered like the others, or so, just something to make him more consistent, look less hand drawn. Uh, Beans is base since he can gun Baldi. That is true. He has saved me many times. It was ruined me. All right, Chalkles is next. We got any more tier lists here? I'm just checking. Guys, you want to put your own tier list in the Hydration Nation? You're welcome to. Um, how many likes do we have, though? Seriously, is it actually only three? I'm going to refresh this. Um, oh, well, that's, you know, it is what it is. If you guys don't like the stream, you don't have to, but I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> um, all right. <sighs> right, we've done that tier list. So... Chalkles, 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 Chalkles. I'm going to say Chalkles is annoying as shit. I might actually put them on one of the lower ones because Chalkles... So Chalkles' whole game mechanic is that you walk in a room, you have limited time. There's going to be a... There's like a sound cue, there's a whistling noise, it builds up. Chalkles is on a blackboard and you have very limited time to get in the room, do what you got to do, answer that math question and get out. Because if you run out of time... Chalkles will lock the door and start playing this annoying song and just spinning around you in there. He'll go, do -do 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 -do. and he'll not only make a noise that draws Bolly to your location, as if he wasn't already on his way, um, but he'll also lock the door, and that lasts for about as long as it took for him to charge up. So if Chalkles ever traps you in a room, it's basically a guaranteed game over. And the thing is, there's really no upside to Chalkles. Chalkles is one of those characters that... It breaks the mold of Baldi's characters always being either helpful or a hindrance. And it's kind of annoying because there's no upside to Chalkles. I feel like an easy upside would have been to have it so that other characters can't go through the door, including Baldi. Um, or maybe that, you know, um, he just doesn't make a sound when, you know, um, he traps you, because Baldi will have already heard the door. So if you use a WD no squeeze and you get trapped, it's not a problem. I feel like that would be a lot fairer. But yeah, as it is, Chalkles just is annoying. Um, there's no upside. The only thing that Chalkles does is encourage players to do the math more quickly, which does add to the stress and kind of dynamic of the game, you know, because it does center on math. But honestly, I really don't like Chalkles, and I would be happy to see Chalkles, you know, go. I don't know if I can give them F tier. I guess they're a useful and interesting, like, you know, distraction. But, like, the thing is, <sighs> Chalkles not being there doesn't really change much. Because Chalk you already want to get the math done as quickly as possible when you're going in a math room. Because it's only on rare occasions where Bolly isn't already chasing you there. Unless you've used a nose squeak or a tape and Bolly doesn't know you're there, you're already trying to go as quick as you can. So it's kind of like the phantoms in Minecraft. They're just annoying and the game isn't really like improved with their presence the way they work so i hope chalkles gets a rework at some point because i feel like chalkles just wasn't very good mm. yeah he's trying to summon a chalk god exactly yeah but yeah chalkles kind of kind of sucks they did make a 3d model of beans it just hasn't been shown interesting Chuckles who spins in a room with totally isn't something trying to summon a demon. Yeah. Four hour rant about post shift two. Bro, please. I'm not even gonna. 
but yeah, Chuckles is Chuckles is trash. Honestly, Chuckles is probably my least favorite Baldi's character. And I'm only realizing this now, but they they provide nothing to the game loop. Does Baldi have a wife? Not to my knowledge. No, not this ugly motherfucker. Speaking of Cloudy Copter, Cloudy Copter was first introduced in the field trip demo that we touched on earlier. So Cloudy Copter. The way they work now, because they were originally added in the field trip and they did a whole different thing, they first appeared in Plus, which was released in like 2020, 2019, I don't remember. P uh, actually, let me just fact check this. When did Baldi's Basics Plus first start out? Plus, my first stream on Plus, which was like the day it released, or close enough, was June 2020. Yeah, it was mid-2020 when Plus finally released. Same year as uh, Henry Stittman um, completing the mission. So... Cloudy Copter will randomly move around, kind of like, um, Gotta Sweep. No, not like Gotta Sweep. They'll randomly move around like Playtime, or The Principal, or Beans. And they'll stop in certain places and just blow wind. And, again, given how pathing and the map design is important in Baldi's Basics, again, it's a perfect example of being both helpful and a hindrance. Um, Cloudy Copter, you know can either give you a free boost where you can move without having to you can basically sit still and move while getting your stamina back or you can walk but go at like sprinting speed or you can just zoom really fast by sprinting with you know um the uh what do you call it the like you know the air but if cloudy copter's blowing against and you're going against the wind it uses up stamina so it's the inverse it's kind of saving versus expending you know stamina um, and, you know, Cloudy Copter, you know, can be both a helpful and a hindrance in that regard. They can appear pretty much anywhere and just, you know, either blow you, you know, away from Baldi or towards Baldi, and they can either, like, really slow you down and be annoying or, like, really give you a boost. Um, there's not really a whole lot else to it. That's pretty much Cloudy Copter in a nutshell. I'm give them a B, because they're a serviceable and interesting character who has a simple game mechanic that adds to the overall dynamic of the game. You know, they actually, like, you know, focus on you know, restricting hallways or, like, you know, giving you, like, different exit routes and stuff. They're pretty good. Not a whole lot to them. They're just kind of a weird bird thing. Um, but yeah, Cloudy, Cloudy Copter's alright, I'd say. Cloud, Cloudy Copter's cool. I have no complaints uh, big time. They're just not very iconic. I, I don't know. They're much of a personality. They just kind of exist. Um, Mrs. Pomp. Miss is Pump is very interesting. So she's got like an SCP-096 kind of deal, which is kind of crazy. Because she has this horrifying scream in her face and she eats you. Well, she doesn't eat you. Basically, Mrs. Pump um, will randomly wander around and you can avoid her. She has a very loud, like, obvious sound cue. So if you hear it, you can avoid running into her if you don't want to deal with her. But if she sees you, she will run up to you really fast. She'll freeze you in place for a second or two, so you won't be able to move. And then you have two minutes-ish. You have limited time to go attend her class. You've got limited time to go attend her class. And if you make it to class, you get you can think points. Uh, they're usually in notebook rooms. So sometimes, you know, she'll go to a class and it's really helpful. You've already been to a notebook. Sometimes she'll go to a class and you've already been, so you've got to backtrack and it's kind of annoying. Um, so that's kind of like 50-50 depending on your notebook progression. This is why either avoiding her entirely or running into her early is really useful. It's good to run into her early because then you can just go to her class while collecting a notebook. And you've got limited time. So again, it encourages, you know, the players to move fast, think fast, that kind of thing. But if you run out of time, she does something very unique. She will basically, until, while you're still in the corridor, you're safe. But once you go inside of any room, once a door shuts and you are inside a room rather than a corridor, she will rush up behind the door and then when you open it, she'll jump scare you and she will grab you screaming, drag you all the way back to her class and then dump you in her class, have the door locked and then jump around for like a minute. Um, it's kind of like Chalkles but less annoying actually because what happens, and I think this has changed a few times, what happens to my memory is that the door isn't locked, you can actually leave her classroom while she's screaming, but if she sees you leave, she'll go outside and drag you back, which extends how long you're in there. So it's kind of like a less annoying version of Chalkles. Um, if you don't make it to her class on time, if you don't navigate the general map well enough, 
um, then she's basically a ticking time bomb. And of course, you can avoid her by not going into a room if you're that late stage of a game. But if you have to go into a room, she'll get you, and then you will have no control for, like, however long it takes to get to the classroom and, like, another 10 seconds, which is really dangerous, because it's quite a lot of time to have basically no control. And depending on where Baldi is, that could be an instant game over, but alternatively, she moves fast like Gotta Sweep. It's like Gotta Sweep. She could also save you. Um, but unlike God of Sweep, she isn't like random bullshit. What she does is dependent on player action, and this gives the player agency over their situation. The player is in control of whether or not, um, you know, they suffer the consequences of not making it to a class, because with the way Plus is overall balanced, you know, you've always got to, unless something random like this happens, you know, whether or not you make it to a class is your choice, so whatever you choose will come with the consequences that have to come with it. So again, it gives the player control, it gives the player choice, it gives the player agency. It's like a more enhanced version of Gotta Sweep that can either be a help or a hindrance. Mostly a hindrance, but with maybe a bit of help depending on the situation. Um, I'm gonna give her an A. I think she's an excellent designed antagonist. I think she's one of the better um, characters, even though she's got the weirdest goofy R design. Again, I think her personality is very strange. She's got like, again, like Baldi, she's got this like outwardly sweet and like normal attitude. And then she just goes mental when she don't go to her class. And she's like a pencil or a rubber with like a weird head with like all this goofy, you know, like poorly designed, like clipping hair and like demented looking eyeballs. Uh, I don't know what her deal is with that. Not very memorable, to be honest, but still very well designed. I think maybe just if her personality was improved, I mean, A tier. Um, that leaves everyone except Null. Null isn't on this list. I don't know what I'd give Null anyway, to be really honest. So the test. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give Chuckles an F. I'm going to delete the F tier. Give Chuckles an E, sorry. The test is an interesting one. The test has a very bizarre and advanced game mechanic. The test, it's like SCP-173, kind of not really. You have to look at them to stop them from getting you. They move very fast when not being observed, but they won't start going towards you unless they can also see you. So if you break eye contact, they won't chase you. They will only chase you if they can see you and you can't see them. If you are looking at them and... They, so, it's very complicated. I'm actually going to draw a graph out here, okay? Let's say that this is... Okay. Let's say, hypothetically, that this is you. You are the player, okay? And let's say, hypothetically, that this is the test, all right? So, the test... If the test can see you... If the test can see you... Then, um, it will chase you. It will go towards you extremely fast unless you're watching them. In which case, you've got five seconds, I think. It's very complicated. You've got like five seconds, um, before they, is it freeze time? But here's the thing. If you break eye contact, if they can't see you, it doesn't matter whether or not you can see them. They will not attack you, okay? They, in, you know, in that situation, if they can't see you, they will, they will not attack you. Where is my line? Where is my line? Let me have this. Excuse me. They will not, they will not attack you, all right? This graph is terrible. Basically, if they can see, they'll attack unless you're looking at them, which will freeze them in place. Um, if they reach you, if they touch you, Loads of weird, funky things happen. Time freezes. Weird ambience starts playing. Everything goes dark. It's really foggy. It's really hard to see. So you're basically limited in vision, and it makes you vulnerable to the likes of the principal. But Baldi essentially just stops completely. You are completely immune to Baldi. So even though there's a load of disadvantages to it, there's a massive advantage. And again, great example of help versus hindrance. If the test catches you, you're basically immune to Baldi um, because time freezes um, and you can make a lot of distance from him and do a lot. And it lasts like ages as well. That's like two minutes. But like there's weird sounds and it gets very dark and it's hard to see. So it can make you vulnerable to other characters. Um, 173 mixed with Dio. Yeah, kind of like a weeping angel. It's very strange. Apparently, it's her body is a shoe. That's really weird. Interesting to know, Duncan. Herman, welcome to the stream. I like first price, my favorite Baldi basics. You can first prize. 
Baldi's basics. Yes, very good. Weird bird thing, I'm afraid. Best description of Cloudy Copter, for real, for real. Yeah. Apparently they're different models in development. Apparently you thought they were a wolf? Bruh. Yeah, exactly, Creeper, about the phantoms. Um... Super Soul would put Bully in E or F because he feels like an annoying thing. Personified wall that gives an item useful and somewhere inconsistent. Fair enough. I just think his personality puts him up a tier. I think his visual design puts him up a tier. And I think the game mechanic is serviceable. I don't think it can be really annoying and it can get you in an unwinnable situation. But like on its own, I feel like it's minimalist, but it works. I I, I don't know. I feel like I, I could give him a C maybe, but it would it wouldn't feel fair. I feel like the only thing that sucks is that he doesn't do a whole lot else. Um and also, yeah, test dithered, yeah. Exactly, Duncan, yeah. But the test is very complicated. Um, no one really understands the test. But they have a really weird design as well, the gloves and a head that's kind of the shape the same as Baldi. And we don't know what it is. We don't really know anything about it. They're very mysterious. I think I'm gonna give them an A. I really like the test, but there's just, there's something missing. There's just, there's a piece of the puzzle missing. Either a game mechanic or, like, uh, uh, you know, like a lore, like, story thing. Like, I just, I want to know more about this character. Like, what even is it, you know? Like, the test, there's just, there's something missing from the equation. But yeah, that is my Baldi's Basics character tier list. I'm going to post that one onto the Hydration Nation as well. That is my ranking of all of the Baldi's Basics characters. This was a lot more in-depth and took a lot more time than I thought it would. I thought this stream would be over really soon. Turns out I have to worry. We're going to have an easy two and a half hour stream here. Because here's the thing. There is actually a lot to say here. I think this is just a game I'm passionate about. There's a lot to analyze, a lot to understand. And what this is all building on, I think, is potentially a Baldi's Basics continuity error video. I'm just going to say it. This isn't a secret, okay? I want to do a Baldi's Basics video for continuity error, possibly multiple. But I don't really have a clear idea for one. Like, I need a title. I need a structured plan for one. And I think this stream is really helping me come up with a clear idea for a continuity era Baldi's Basics video. If you don't know what this is, by the way, guys, this is my other channel where I do video essays. Can we talk about this? How crazy is that? Almost 10,000 views with no signs of stopping. Um, these are both coming to 2,000. These have both surpassed 500. Even this one is getting towards 200. Who has, who's seen this video? Has there, have any of you seen this video? I'm curious if it's going to get more comments. I don't think I've really hit the Bendy fandom, sadly. It's a bit of a shit video, to be honest. But, you know... It is what it is. I didn't have time for anything else. Bol Bendy is going to be out in like three days. How ridiculous is that? Where'd the time go? Um, yeah. All right. Item tier list. I promise this one won't be as long. I'm not even going to add an F tier. I'm just going to have a, an E tier. Yeah, I'm just making sure that's right. Um, but yeah, that's my character tier list. You're free to disagree and contend my uh, my takes. Yeah, the test is missing his arms in the early access trail. I remember that. The greatest life achievement is obviously passing the test. Passing the test? Interesting. The test is the successful kid, maybe. Or it's a robot built to simulate, you know, children. Maybe it's a robot built to do perfect maths. I don't know. It's supposed to replace us. Hmm. Creeper as ever being a loyal viewer, seeing all the continuity error videos. Based Giga Chad pilled. Um... Alright, so, let's do the items now. I'm going to try and get through this a bit more quickly, and just kind of start off with the obvious items. Energy flavored Zesty Bar, um, really no downside. It gives you a much needed sprint boost that completely regenerates your sprint instantly, and it gives you extra before draining it again. Um, S tier, perfect. B Soda, S tier, without question. The B Soda is one of the most critical items in Baldi's Basics. It does, um... Obviously, it pushes characters. Any character, it gets pushed away by it. Uh, again, very useful down long corridors. Obviously, it comes at the cost of being against the rules. The principal will put you in detention if he sees you using it, which can be a bit of an issue, but you can push the principal back, so it kind of, you know, counters that effectively. Um, the quarter, very useful. Obviously, not inherently good on its own, but I'm going to give it um, an A, because it's very multi-purpose. You can use the quarter to either get, you know, uh, zesty-flavoured, energy bar you can use it to get a b soda you can use it to even buy any item in the randomized birthday bash mode and you can use it to do the same thing that baldi's least favorite tape does which i'm gonna give it s 
because what it does, it makes a noise so that Baldi can't hear you. Especially when going around the inside areas where it's got really tight cords and stuff, this is an absolute game changer because it makes Baldi completely lose you. It does come with a bit of a caveat though, in that you have to use it in the principal's office. It's like the only place with a player which will actually use it. So I'm going to give it A tier because it's kind of limited in that regard, but it's still really, really useful. Um, scissors. Uh, S tier, just again, massively multi-purpose item, you never want to go without. With this, you can deal with playtime, you can deal with beans as gum, you can deal with first prize if you don't want to be pushed by him. Uh, the scissors do so many things, uh, they're just generally useful, and you know, you're going to be using them very commonly, so yeah. Much needed. Um, okay. The, you know, let's get all the best ones out of the way. Alarm clock, I'm going to give it A tier, I think, again, Sometimes you mess it up, it's down to the player, but this is a very useful way of getting Boldy off your tail by literally just making a noise somewhere else. I would have given this B tier, but because of the recent update, I'm putting it in A, because not only do you have, like, a thing, it goes off um, after a certain period of time and can lead Boldy away from you if he loses sight of you, you can actually now choose the exact amount of time you want this to go off and you can specify 15, 30, 45, 60 seconds and that makes it really useful. Um, obviously you can only put it down somewhere you've been, um, but you know, still very, very useful item. I love how this thing works. They even got the updated model here. Um, very, you know, multi-purpose. Honestly, I could even give that S tier, but I don't want to be too generous. Um, because again, the actual functionality isn't always the same. It's probably not as, I think I would do put this in S. But because it's not as useful as this, because it's like a one-time sound. As soon as you make another sound, it's no longer useful. But it's it's got its use. Um, WD no squee S tier, no A tier. I mean no S tier, because with this you can basically hide from Bolly indefinitely. It's really useful. You just right-click a door. As long as he didn't see you, you're in, and he doesn't know where you are. It's amazing. Bolly can randomly wander in, but that's not really down to the item. Um, if you lose because of that kind of annoying thing. Like, it will just, you know, keep you hidden from Baldi. It's really useful when you're in small spaces and he's getting close, but he's around a corner and you can get away from him that way. Um, I don't even remember what this is called. And I know this is essential for the stealth challenge, but i got to be honest, I never use these. Like, maybe I should to avoid getting caught by the principal more often, but especially with the limited um, inventory size now, these basically stop you being seen by the principal. Uh, maybe arts and crafters as well. I don't know if it works on other characters. But even if it does, you know, like, you're going to be out of the area you use this in no time. Because you've got to keep moving away from Baldi. So they're just not that useful. Because, like, you know, once you've used it, it's like, well, they go away after a little bit anyway. And you're already moving away because Baldi's chasing you. It doesn't matter if Baldi can't see you. He's still going to go towards you, depending on the situation. So, I'm gonna give that D tier. I just, I don't know, these aren't very useful. They're kind of neat in concept, but in practice, they just, they don't really do much for me. Um, okay. We're getting into the items that were added more recently now, like Birthday Bash and Plus. Swinging Door Lock, S tier. Amazing item. You can completely cut off any character, even the principal, even Baldi, from attacking you, even they're right in front of you, with this item. Because there are lots of swinging doors, especially in that original map. And that forces them to go around so far away. It's super handy to have. And it's up there with the B-Soda in terms of blocking enemies when you need a lot of time. Um, God, what do I pick? I'm trying to do these in the order they were introduced, but I don't remember now. So it's going to be a bit hit and miss. Big old boots, C tier. Not going to lie, again, I don't use these often. They're kind of useful in concept. Not being swept by God of Sweep or First Prize could be really helpful. Um, but again, if Baldi is on Gotta Sweep, these will not save you from being attacked by Baldi, you know, and, you know, they'll stop you from being swept into Baldi, but they won't stop Baldi from being swept into you. I just don't use them often as well, because first prize, more often than not, is a help rather than a hindrance. So I like to use these, not, I like to not use these. Um, so I don't know, C tier, they're kind of mid. Um... Principal's keys, these got reworked recently. Um, I'm gonna give them B tier, I guess. Nah, I'm gonna give them A tier. Game changer, because you know, 
Obviously, if you're too quick, the principal will literally see you escaping detention, detention and immediately put back in. And it's kind of annoying because that's down to the map layout. But the keys themselves, having you unlock the door and then open it is really neat. Because what it does is that it allows you to save a lot of time. Which could change game because a lot of times body will kill you while you're in the detention room because you're physically not able to get out. This allows you to save you, you know, 15, 30, 45 seconds of time. Um, and escape detention, you know, quickly. Uh, really helpful, but again, um, all they really do is buy you time. It, depending on the situation, they might not be, they might not make much of a difference, but the body's already there. Uh, or if the principal's still in the corridor. Because again, you have to wait for the principal to get out of sight of the doorway anyway, so they're not the best. Um, what will, though, is the faculty badge. Or even the whistle. Uh, we should talk about these. Faculty badge is super underrated. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna say uh, it doesn't spawn very commonly, um, but I'm gonna say like A tier because it basically makes you exempt from all of the rules. It basically makes you exempt from all the rules. You can go into faculty rooms and the principal won't bother you. Playtime won't bother you. Um, the bully won't bother you. I don't believe. Like this is a really good item. I think the only reason I don't give it S tier is because it's not very common, and it kind of runs out very fast. So you want to use it in select moments. It's it's not the best, um, but I give it an A tier. I give the whistle B tier because the, the whistle's really cool because it summons the principal to your location very fast, which you can use to get rid of the bully um, if you know you're waiting on him, um, or you could even use it to summon him and then break a rule so that he puts you in detention to get you away from Baldy, which is a risky strat. But again, I don't find myself using it often. It spawns very rarely. It's just kind of not that helpful because most of the time you can just give the bully an item and there's other ways to deal with Baldy. So again, kind of low priority. Um, now we're getting into like the overpowered items. These are all the really, really OP items. These four items are like the strongest items in Baldi's basics. They are not to be trifled with. Um, I'm trying to remember the order they were introduced in. I think it was this. So just re catch up with chat. Hmm. Yeah, Creeper. I don't know how that works, to be honest. The test is very confusing. I, I would need to, like, what, I, someone should make an entire video just explaining the test. Because it, I actually don't really know. It's very confusing. Um, oh, Duncan just sent me uh, something on Discord. Let me just go check that out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ugh. Yeah, so I'm going to share this with the stream. Dr. Reflex is a character for one of Miss Man's Baltimore comics before Baldi's Basics even came out. In case you're wondering, not sure if you knew about this, but yeah, Miss Man Confirmed he was going to be in Plus a while ago. Yeah, so before Baldi's Basics existed, like years before, going back to like 2015, Baltimore, the teacher, was a character that uh, Micah McGonagall had, and he posted about him on Twitter. Uh, he had old drawings when he was a kid of this character. Um, so, someone asked him a bunch of questions here. My, Duncan, just put these in the Hydration Nation, would you? I think that'd be really cool, so I could share this with everybody. I'm not going to read through all this now, but this is some old questions that um, someone asked uh, Micah McGonagall just about the characters and the game mechanics and stuff, and you can see some of the items here. Some of the, some of the answers here, sorry. Dude, I can't do words. But yeah, um... And yeah, it's just just answering a lot of um, you know little questions about Bolly's basics. So definitely go post that on the Hydration Nation. I would love to see everyone's responses to that. Um, the chalk also makes it so Bolly can't see you. Wait, really? That's literally never saved me though because the sound is what draws him to me. Huh. Okay, the gravel hook, as we've seen, is pretty hella useful. I'm gonna give it an A tier. Um, it usually has five uses, and the thing is, it takes longer. I like that it, it's like first prize, it accelerates the further you are away, but it takes a long time to kind of shoot where it's going if you're aiming further away, so it has a really neat trade-off with that. They're really rare, but they're great for making a lot of distance and recovering stamina. I mean, I'm actually going to give an S tier, in the same way I would give the lock and the B-Soda S tier. This thing is great for getting away from Baldi, um, when you've got really long distances to cover and he, he's gaining on you and, you know, you've just, like, got to make a lot of distance. It's great for getting to the exits in the end game. Uh, Duncan, do what you want. Discussion 2 is fine. Yeah. Um, start a thread if you want, man. I don't care. Um, but, yeah. The apple. 
Now, I didn't understand how the apple worked back in the day, but you don't even have to click it. You just have to be holding it when Baldi touches you. And if you do that, he will pause and spend a, do a whole sequence where he eats the apple before resuming his chase on you. This is, again, S tier, you know, because it can really save you in a pinch. It's kind of hard to get, so maybe I can put an A tier as well because it doesn't stop Baldi for very long. It's long enough to maybe get one notebook in a pinch, which is probably just fair. But, like, yeah, you don't get a lot of time. I think I'm still going to give it S, though. What I'm not going to give S is the Dangerous Teleporter because the Dangerous Teleporter is just pure RNG. Most of the time, it'll get you away from Baldi. Like, it would have to specifically put you near Baldi for it to actually, like, get you killed, which would suck. But the thing is, due to its completely random nature, um, most of the time, like, you might be put somewhere very unhelpful where you're gonna have to open a door and make a noise and draw Baldi right back to you, um, in order to, like, get moving. And it might put you far away from where you need to be or even close to where you were before. So, the dangerous teleporter is just like gotta sweep. Pure chaos, pure randomness. It can be helpful, it cannot be. Mm. But yeah. I'm gonna give it B just because it's so RNG. But, um, you know, it's a fair thing. It's a cool thing. Um, now, the portal poster. The final item, the portal poster. I would have given this an S. But it got nerfed. For those of you who don't know, the portal poster, which according to its in-game description, is a technology created by Baldi himself. It's a poster, you put it on a wall, and it creates a hole. Now, obviously, it only works on specific walls. And I never really looked into this very deeply, because it's pretty rare. But what it basically does is really useful for... If you're in uh, the principal's office, and there's only one door, and you don't have keys, and Baldi's near, you place down a portal, and you can get out of the detention office quickly. And just, you know, make your way, um, make your own exit. And again, if you're really, if Baldi's getting close and you're in like a classroom and there's like a hallway outside, it's a great way for getting to, you know, an exit. But it requires, like, there's got a lot of specific requirements. It only works on certain walls. It's a very rare item. Um, and the only thing that really stops it from being S tier, I might even put it in B tier, because the thing that really drags it down for me now is that other characters can go through it, including Baldi. So, instead of being like a special portal that only you can go through and that acts as a wall to other characters, any character can go through it. So really it's just like opening up an alternate route which Baldi can still cut you off more quickly. Um, so it's not really that useful anymore. Uh, you can still use it to get to like secret rooms and stuff more easily. And I guess it's like kind of neat if you're trying to get a different angle. Uh, but I might honestly put it in a B. I don't know. Portal post is not that great. With that said and done, guys, that is my tier list. That is my done tier list. I'm now going to post this in discussion two. And that is everything. That is all of my Baldi's Basics tier lists. Um, and I'm going to end the stream now. So I hope you have enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with this. I think this was really neat. Um, really nice kind of dive into, you know, Baldi's Basics. Again, none of the items are really that bad, honestly. I don't think there are any items that really suck that I would never use. Like, this is the closest one. But even this has use on paper. Um... But, you know, the field trip demo and the freaking chalkles. God, chalkles suck. I can tolerate playtime. But chalkles, man. Chalkles needs a rework. Um, this is my, my honest, like, tier list. I think these are all pretty based and pretty fair. But uh, if you want to post your own and maybe have a further discussion with me on the Hydration Nation, you may. If they're in discussion too, guys. Go check them out. Um, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you have enjoyed. Subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't already, and share this with your friends. Keep sharing the channel, guys. Keep growing. I don't say this enough, but, like, I'm trying to reach new audiences, and every time you share with other Discord servers, communities, individuals, and DMs, friends, just tell them, you know, ah, oh, there was this cool YouTube video you should check out, this cool stream, it's called Mr. Matt, you know? Give people a chance, because there are, might be many people out there who would love my content, and they don't know you know, that I exist yet, they wouldn't know, so give them that chance, and maybe we can grow the community and just keep taking us up to new heights. Uh, Macmillan, the, you know, charity, shout out, link below, check them out, uh, obviously my Discord and everything is there, go check out, uh, True Player and his Discord server, this, we, we didn't get to touch on this much, but Ethan, you know, is a great guy, hey, Nephrite sharing there is nice, um, you know, you can meet people, over here, we've got general chats, meme, you know, out of context, all the usual funny stuff. You can get, you know, personalized pings on, like, his tweets, you know, his YouTube uploads. Um, 
we have some hilarious staff only stuff. There's self prom there's an entire category for self promotion. There's an entire category for Geometry Dash, which I've been pretty active in because I've been experiencing Geometry Dash anew. We've got a whole FNAF one, a Minecraft one, um, you know, all kinds. It's really cool. There's a British people only thing for some reason. Don't ask me why that exists. But yeah, it's a really, it's a fun channel. We've even got the furry roleplay, which Nephrite is really getting into. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have Meme of the Week as well. Great, like, you know, weekly event. You guys should check out. Where's Meme of the Week? Where do, I, where do I find Meme of the Week? Is that not a Meme of the Week channel? I swear that it was. Yeah, I guess it just goes through announcements. I don't know. But yeah, um, it's 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 a great server. You should check it out. It's like really well organized. It like quickly updated. It basically started off active, bustling. We got a nice user base as well. Interesting role system. Again, it's, it's not bloated in any way, but it also has a lot to offer. So I highly recommend you check it out, honestly. Um, but yeah, that really is everything. So... If you like the Hydration Nation, you'll love the True Player server. It's very similar in the way it's built. Um, yeah, it's basically the Henry Stipman Teleporter Supercell. Absolutely right. Okay, if that's everything, then I guess we're done. Um, I want to do more Baldi's Basics kind of debates and discussions in depth. We did a review of Plus a long time ago. Maybe we should do a classic remastered review. Or better yet, we could do like a versus head-to-head -head like we did with Boris and Bendy all that time ago. Um... But I think a continuity error video is in the works now. I've got an idea for a script. Uh, and you know what? I don't think we got 10 likes, but I'm still going to go grind out some of the secrets. Because I, I want to get those. I need to make those into like... Well, I'd say hydrated highlight videos, but I'm going to be deleting hydrated highlights. So we'll see how that goes. Any more QOTD attempts? Because only one person gave it a go. So they win by default if no one else does. Unless I don't remember. Um, but if I just search QOTD... So we had Super Soul, who's a classic remastered because of the, you know, culmination of all the versions, the secrets, and the customization with, like, the fun settings. Um, are we just going to give it to Super Soul? I don't see any other QOTDs. Does anyone want to make an argument? Which is the best version of Baldi's Basics and why? Which is your favorite? Any takers? Or are we just going to let Super Soul have it? Are we just going to let him have it, guys? Um, I don't really have anything else to say. I've already shilled out big time. I love this music. Do, 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 do. Hey, if you guys want to give it to him, it was a good answer. I think it's hard to argue that Classic Remastered isn't the best. It's definitely like the definitive Baldi's Basics. But I'm going to play Devil's Advocate, and just for the sake of argument, I'm going to tell you guys why Plus is better. Plus is a work in progress, okay? It's not entirely fair to judge it yet. But even if we judge this as the final product, it has the challenge modes as opposed to the fun settings. The challenge modes are a lot more fair and a lot more interesting. You know, what are the fun modes? The lights go dim, everything's mirrored, and things are harder. It's vague. The challenge modes are very specific. Speed, stealth, and um, strategy with the grapple hook. You know, they're very dynamic, very unique. Plus also has all the same things that Classic Master has. Endless mode and, you know, all of the same characters and more. There are characters and random events exclusive to Plus, which Classic doesn't have. Plus has better balancing. Plus has random seeds. Plus has achievements. Wait, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Plus does not have achievements or secrets, but you don't need those to compensate for a very high quality game that I am sure will be just as decked out as Class Remastered with achievements and secrets when it updates to its final version. That's my argument. But Super Soul, you are the winner. So thank you so much for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe, do all that crap. Check out Super Soul's channel. Guy does some great videos. And yeah, I will see you all next time. There should be a stream tomorrow. Jedi Fallen Order, I think. I need to go prep that. Everything's kind of a mess right now. If I go radio silent for a couple days, it's just because I'm busy. But there should be lots of streams soon. So thank you so much for watching. And stay hydrated.